Good afternoon, friends, and welcome to Ed Friday's episode five. Thank you very much for taking out your time. Uh, and I'm sure, I mean, uh, we'll have a greater turnout today because uh, since last uh, four months, we have been kind of uh, doing these uh, webinars in the morning times, and a lot of educators reached out to us to shift it to post lunch. And I hope, I mean, uh, that will solve a lot of things today. Uh, today is uh, Ed Friday, and in fact, I mean, the entire month at Friday, uh, the topic is project-based learning. And today's uh, first session is about harnessing the power of uh, uh, project-based learning in schools. Uh, we have a super moderator today, and I'd uh, request uh, Mr. Vikramjit Singh Rupai to please turn on his camera. Uh, Vikramjit Singh Rupai is a very dear friend of mine. He is an educator, author, uh, and historian who left his 14 year long IT career to turn into a teacher trainer and a heritage activist. He established Heritage Shala to set up heritage labs in school where students are taught routine subjects through liberal arts and by using examples from history. He's a five times TEDx speaker and consultant to many government and non-government organizations. He's currently a visiting faculty member at the National Institute of Fashion Technology and in past served as an auditor for UNESCO Aga Khan Trust for Culture and Education Quality Foundation of India. Uh, uh, we are also planning an Northeast trip, by the way. I mean, that's something latest, I mean, that we've been uh, planning uh, because we want to take uh, a lot of educators uh, next year, early next year, maybe January or February to uh, Northeast, that is Meghalaya, Manipur, and Guwahati to see some really amazing schools and, uh, you know, that study tool. So I've requested uh, Vikram Paji, I mean, that's what I fondly call him to please accompany uh, in this script so that you know I can also learn. So thank you so very much, uh, Vikram GC, for uh, agreeing to uh, super moderate this uh, particular Friday. And before I give it all over to you, I'd want to kind of make a few hygiene uh, announcements, wherein uh, the first session is going to uh, begin just now in just two to three or four minutes from now. And uh, after that, uh, we, you know, we have also increased uh, uh, 10 minutes uh, uh, for the time of each session. So 50 minutes each session, and then uh, we'll go on to session two, then session three, and then we'll quickly for 15 minutes, we do a summary session where the super moderator, more like a Sutradhar Vikramjit Singh Guprai, along with all the three moderators would kind of talk about the highlights of uh, the learning from their own session. So please be here uh, with us, I mean, for all the three sessions and the summary session. And the certification is only for those who kind of finish all of uh, the three sessions. Uh, the questions and answers should be put in Q&A and our speakers will, uh, you know, I've requested them uh, prior to this in the practice session to kind of take uh, time to kind of type answers or kind of pick up the moderator could pick up uh, the answers as well after they're finished. And uh, yeah, that's it. Over to you, Vikram Jeet Singh. Thank you, Ravi. Thank you. Thank you for this wonderful introduction. And yes, the Northeast trip is going to be something quite exciting because what I have experienced, uh, especially in Northeast, when I explored those areas and why, when I was visiting the schools and I met several principals across the region, what I realized was that uh, their entire focus, for example, when we are sitting in the cities like Delhi, Jaipur, Bangalore, Calcutta, uh, you know, uh, we have so much technology around us. And over there, the moment you step out of Guwahati or maybe Imphal or for that matter, even Shillong, though Shillong also I would keep in the category of nature. Uh, but the moment you go a little bit deeper into uh, the villages, you will realize that nature is the most important thing for them. And whatever they are doing, be it learning, uh, their, their education, knowledge, information, whatever words you want to use, everything evolves uh, around nature. And you know what? I think that is the perfect form of project-based learning because their project is actually their livelihood, their sustainability, not just for them as an individual for their whatever 60, 80, 90 years of life they have, but for the entire planet. And the kind of message that they are passing on, not only we have Asia's cleanest village in Northeast, a place that gets maximum rainfall is also the best maintained place so there has to be something where the people, the, 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 the living root bridges is such, an, such a classic example. And very recently you were talking about that. Isn't that also a project? Now executing that one single project, just imagine how much they would learn, their generations would learn. And it takes generations to create one such bridge where they would just have uh, two or more trees and the branches of the trees, especially the roots. So they are basically the roots. They would tie those roots and let them grow. And as the roots grow, they form a proper bridge and they can cross over. And it's, it's, it's wonderful. 
you know, since uh, my childhood, I've been playing with uh, cars and blocks and different things. It, to be very honest, just before the session, I was with my son playing with Lego blocks. I still play with them. And I realized that how much I can learn from even these simple games. Uh, when I grew up, I started reading about Takshila and Nalanda and universities like, or you, know, you go to Hellenistic Greece, I read about their the trivium and quadrivium uh, formats. And I found out that even, uh, I found out that any education system that you talk about, which has been there before the advent of the industrial revolution was something where you would be given a task and while executing that task, it could be as simple as just clean this ashram, which sounds, as of today, which sounds a very, you know, menial task that why would a student come and clean the school? But that was one of the important tasks back then when there were gurukuls and ashrams. Even that had some lessons in the, hidden in, you know, the entire process. Now, while I was going through all this, and then I came across this term project-based learning. And that's when I realized that what we have been doing for centuries and centuries, and not just as India, but wherever education was or organized education system was, whether it was Rome or Greece, or you know, even Europe and Russia, talk about India, the entire Southern Asian subcontinent, it was project-based learning. But when the industrial revolution came, there were different needs and we kind of adapted to it. And now that we have a formal term of project-based learning or interdisciplinary project-based learning, multi-intelligence-based system, we've got all those fancy terms. Uh, the core principle or the core functionality does not change. Now, uh, I've got enough time to discuss all this with you. And uh, we have some wonderful people, our panelists, our experts from all over India who are going to share their views. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass on uh, the focus, the light, the spotlight to the first panel that we have today. And I'll come back and we will continue this discussion later. Let's let's hear them out. Uh, the first panel is going to talk about the planning and the teaching strategies that uh, uh, we can implement in our schools. For that, I would like to request Dr. Sharmila Chaudhary to uh, please switch on her uh, camera. And Dr. Sharmila Chaudhary is the principal of Global International School for, from uh, Baner Ghatta. I hope I'm pronouncing the name correct now. Yes, uh, yes. This, this, is, this is in Bangalore. 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 This is in Bangalore. Uh, uh, welcome, ma'am. Uh, by the way, guys, you, do you know that Bangalore was the first city in India outside the direct British control, which had electricity? Now, there are so many things. Just with these small, small facts, if we start working on it, we can learn so much. And even today, the Kaban Park has that memorial hall, which is now the library, which is named after the prime minister or the chief minister back then, who was actually instrumental in getting electricity outside Darjeeling for the very first time in Asia, anywhere where, um, you know, the, the British were not directly in control. So anyways, uh, we'll keep on doing these discussions uh, uh, in between. Over to you, Sharmila, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Vikramjit Singh Ruprai. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. So I have with me uh, today for the panel discussion for project-based learning, I have Mr. Bharat Goel, who is the chairman of Bhartiam International School as a panelist from Rudrapur. So Mr. Goel, if we can have your uh, video on. I also have with me Ms. Nagamani, who is head of academics, Glendon International School, Hyderabad. Welcome, Ms. Nagamani. I also have Ms. Taruna Kapoor, principal of Ramagya School, Dadri, as a panelist. So thank you so much, all of you, for joining me today for today's session. Yes, so when we say project-based learning, it is a great way to develop collaboration, develop critical thinking, communications, at the same time, boosting student engagement and ownership. So my first question to Mr. Goel is, how easy it is to implement project-based learning today in virtual classes? Because children in India and teachers are yet to be back to school, maybe very soon, grade 9, 10, 11, 12, but we are a little apprehensive of that. So how easy it is, sir, to implement this PBL in virtual classes? Over to you, sir. So you need to unmute yourself, sir, Mr. Goel. 
Yes. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible, sir. Am I audible? You are audible, sir. Uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Shamila, ma'am, for this question. Um, in my opinion, uh, project-based learning is extremely easy to be implemented, especially in a digital environment today. See, all of us are governed by various constraints. And uh, the essence of project-based learning is to develop or give the context to the content that you're teaching. And today, when we have a uh, digital space, an entire learning has to go offline, online. So a similar book and chalk and talk method of teaching that was existing will not work. Traditional activities that we were doing or pedagogy or which was an activity-based pedagogy which we, we were taking care in our classrooms will not work. So it is more important that the student-led learning is focused upon. And this probably is the crux of project-based learning. Diff exploration, students taking control of the uh, teaching and learning processes themselves. This is what uh, is possible and this is what will make the difference in this digital era. In fact, uh, if you ask me, I would say this um, online education has been a boon for PBL and it has given a big push to uh, various pedagogies that can be implemented. In the same. Yes, yes, absolutely right. Very well said that it is a boon and it is very easy to implement PBL in a virtual classes. So uh, I come to Ms. Nagamani. Uh, Ma'am, your take on this. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I always, um, uh, project-based learning is my passion because uh, I was the one who uh, has actually implemented project-based learning for the first time in Hyderabad uh, across the age groups, uh, but that was in a physical scenario. Uh, but on an online scenario also, as Sir said, uh, Bharat Sir said just now, um, and you also mentioned, uh, Sharmila Ma'am, that on an online scenario, it's very, very, you know, um, easy and uh, project-based learning, I should say, is digital friendly, you know, uh, because um, uh, we, we actually go with uh, the Gen Z of our, the student group, group right? So, uh, who are really, really smart, technically very, very smart, and they're very fast in grasping the, uh, the expected learning outcomes. And they, they adopt to situations very, very uh, fast. They're very sophisticated in their thought process. And um, they connect very easily, you know, um, even for us to look at the readiness of the students. Digital platform will always give us a kind of um, understanding that, okay, this is the right time for us to introduce project-based learning. So, um, yeah, I, I go with it, um, Sharmila ma'am, because we, I have done a project uh, and a product which is uh, launched in the school uh, last year in 2020 with my 10 year olds. Okay, so uh, I'm very confident and I'm, I'm uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm very passionate to, uh, you know, uh, have this launch uh, done in the school by my 10 year olds. Okay, so uh, that's, a, that's a great pride for me. Uh, that is why I'm here, because uh, when I saw uh, the topic given for the uh, webinar, uh, I was like, okay, I have to take it up. Good, good. Glad to hear from you. Yes, digital friendly. That is an important term and a very right term that you have used. That's the need of the art. So I come to Miss Taruna, ma'am. What is your opinion on this? Your say on this? Oh, thank you so much. Happy afternoon to all of you. As my co-panelists have um, already said that it is a blessing in disguise for all of us in these tough times. Yes, I truly agree that yes, this PBL has actually uh, been uh, very well uh, introduced and implemented in my school because we do different projects it's different with the different age groups, with different tools uh, of Microsoft, like Padlet, Flipgrid, Wakelet. My children, my school is in a rural area, but I would like to love to tell you that this one and a half years, my children have, are, have become so user friendly with the tools that, uh, 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 that they don't have any hitch in uh, making PowerPoint presentations. Maybe it's a fourth grade child. 
or five fifth grade child if they have to research they, they can research they have done wonderful projects on happiness on uh, climate action then uh, this environment uh, day celebrations we have given different level of projects to different um, um, groups we did a padlet for them to upload and how beautifully they have done uh, mother i'm full of praise i'm fully satisfied that yes project based learning should be implemented in school because it actually creates a curiosity in the child and a critical thinking in the child and also the collaboration which is very important in this uh, time so that is uh, what i have uh, with me to share with you that yeah. it is very very important and it is very essential for all the schools to uh, you know go ahead with project based learning yes good Thank absolutely you. i agree with you i'll take a question and i will ask uh, miss taruna only to answer that Uh, okay. see how yes, can please. pbl be digitally friendly in virtual where students have to work in a group this is from oh, nisha trivedi and yeah this. when we when we work in group yes a wonderful question she has yes, for me yes. what i am doing in my school that we have uh, whatsapp members and whatsapp groups for our children and uh, they make a we make a group with a teacher in charge right and then they share their views on that like we recently we had a project with japan where uh, we had four teams who had collaborated with japanese students on different uh, topics so of course they they have to contact they have to work on the uh, presentation on the you know anything any project which you, they have to demonstrate they have to work hand in hand and then they have to collaborate with another school in japan so this is a way where a teacher is there who's constantly monitoring that what is going on in the group how they are doing it they 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 share their uh, research they share their presentations they share their work and uh, then then they go ahead once the teacher says this yes this is okay so this is the way we we are doing um from last one and a half years this is the way we are following and we have been successful mm, yes. also there are different ways like wakelet and padlet they share mm. uh, the work over there we can monitor the work over there and then we can suggest the changes to them so there are different means of collaborating on different um, uh, platforms platforms thank you yeah. thank you so much for the wonderful answer because it was a good question so uh, i move to uh, mr goel with the context of what the discussion was happening my next question would be uh, is pbl appropriate for uh, elementary students mr goel is it appropriate for the elementary students yeah. like uh, i would take a cue from what uh, hello yes yes you are audible sir hello Yes, we can hear you, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Yes, I would like to take uh, a couple of cues from uh, what uh, Mr. Vikram Jit Singh was uh, stating before the start of the session, and probably PBL is not a new uh, pedagogy. It's just that we frame this word right now, and if we see that is how education used to happen, and it should happen even in our houses today. so uh, when a mother wants to teach his, his or her child a uh, very basic linguistic skills she doesn't take around uh, a session specially to teach uh, how to call her mama or papa for that matter this is all which happens throughout the living spaces it happens throughout the um, growing phase of the child slowly and gradually child picks up things uh, first they listen to it and then other developmental things happen so pbl is just uh, one such method which we've now formulated as a project based learning it is children learning through uh, different contexts if we are, if we give them so what should be given uh, or done in elementary education right now is probably that the teachers or the facilitators should definitely have their learning outcomes fixed what they wish that the children should learn and the methodologies even in elementary will work brilliantly for that matter uh, i can go ahead and mention one or two projects uh, see every child today knows something different and what we did we did a uh, activity in which we asked our uh, toddlers the kindergartners to take sessions for their friends and peers on what they would like to teach the class today and two or three children in combined they started taking storytelling sessions 
they uh, somebody would know because the mother is very nice with cooking so they would uh, make a shake someday or a lemonade for that matter mm, all these small small things will help them one to communicate well their linguistic skills will also develop how to present themselves how to um, present their views in front of a smaller big group so all these very different learning outcomes can be chalked out around different projects and i think kindergartners are the perfect place where project based learning or the essence of learning should actually happen oh, it should start you. from yes, there yes it should start from there okay so miss nagamani coming to you your take on this um i completely agree with uh, bharat sir uh, because uh, project based learning generally works on the development of skills uh, within the students it's not uh, it's, it's not a class that is to be taught and as mr vikram ji uh, said that um, it happens in the nature right so uh, for us we all believe that nature is the best teacher for all of us so we kept on believing that since ages but in between uh, there were a few fluctuations though um, uh, we we just got uh, diverted from the actual uh, understanding of nature is the best teacher but basically pbl works on the skill development of the students so um, even i have a, a couple of examples to share over here uh, but before that if i have to talk about not only 21st century skills uh by the same time um there is a survey which is done by uh, the employers uh, the union association in the us so um the the whole survey which is done in 2020 uh says that the employees basically look for uh the people who are good at problem solving skills you know the analytical skills ability uh, to work in uh, groups in a team you know the leadership skills initiative the proactive nature that they should have apart from the 21st century skills so there is no age uh, you know uh, limit that okay pbl uh, skill development can't happen with a pre, uh, kindergartner or a really, uh, primary student or a middle school student so we can actually start it off from the you know a uh, two year old three year old onwards so um, the, the example that i would like to give you is uh, this is for a kindergartner uh, uh, segment um, that we have done this project for uh, on an online scenario kids can't go out and play right mm. so um, it was uh, the project was uh, the kids identified that the challenge that they have to resolve is creating their own game Okay. 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 Um. Uh. So they have come up with their own game. They've created a kind of, you know, they have they had Legos. They had their own things. They had normal, uh, the tweaks that they can uh, pick from their communities, and then they've come up. They collaborated with each other, and collaboration happened in breakout rooms with us. so uh, we had uh, we have teachers who will take care of breakout rooms and then uh, they've created their own game and they have set the rules for the game for the great game oh, that they have okay created. great wonderful 4.5 to 5.5 okay and uh, 6 year olds that is my grade one students uh, actually had a project on the vitamins and minerals that we should have because of the covid uh, because of the pandemic that uh, is, is is getting sustained even now mm -hmm. so um, they the product the end product was a street play uh, so the teachers have taken this as a challenge and then we had a, a kind of you know a public audience who were there online and then these six year olds are presenting uh, their understanding and the end product was a street play Okay, so we okay. had uh, okay. we had kids in different windows, and mm. then they were uh, doing it. So that's one of the reasons I always feel that skill development should start from the beginning. You know, from the youngest of the young age groups. Okay, great. So, so and it also helps, as you said, that it helps in building the twenty first century skills. Exactly. Right. Right. Exactly. So, uh, Miss Taruna. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, your take on this. Oh, it's like uh, like Ma'am shared. I'm I'm a project learning, uh, you know, PBL fan, you know, mm -hmm. and I keep uh, doing that quite often. I mean, recently only we had a collaboration of kindergarten with Brazil school, where we have collaborated on uh, food. Okay, 
So these little ones, they shared Indian food and the Brazilian children, kindergarten children, they shared this their food. So that is how uh, a little, little projects, the vegetables of that country, the vegetables of India, they shared with them that we have this in our country, these suits in our country, this food we eat. The mothers cook for them and they show those uh, kitchen that is the national food of India. So this is how they keep, we keep on doing projects. Then last year we had a project on climate action where these children, uh, you know, they, they, uh, they actually took a pledge and they uh, spoke on different topics like air pollution, water pollution, and um, uh, this, uh, why the, the temperature is getting higher. So they, they share their views, they, they drew the posters, they painted their faces, their mothers painted oh, their faces wow. and they spoke a, a few lines and they shared with the, with the students of the other country. And that is how we are, you know, working on these uh, small, small projects. And it is, I feel it is uh, never too late. We should always start very early with the children because uh, the um, uh, earlier, earlier you start, it's always better because if they should know uh, that we should care for the planet and that is very, very important for all of us. Uh, then they are into this germination also. Uh, recently, they are doing a project on germination. They have germinated those seeds. And uh, day by every day, they are uh, monitoring that how this germination is being done. So they have a chart with them. The teacher has shared it with them. Uh, and they are you know, writing or whatever they can write, check across, whatever they have. They're putting their remarks on that. So they are the learning by those. On the chart. Yeah, the record on the chart. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we have, you know, we have a syllabus which is like core, which has got uh, five countries in that for this kindergartens. Uh, children, like, uh, suppose if we are studying map of India, right? So they have different, like, suppose they have to see mark uh, that uh, country, like Finland, US, and other countries on that map. And they have this in their book. And plus, when they are doing this map, they also uh, get to know about the food of that country. They Absolutely. get to know the, the, the national symbol of that country. Mm -hmm. So there are different mm -hmm. aspects, you know, related to that uh, project. Again, this is a PBL. And mm -hmm. the children are really enjoying and doing really, really well. Yeah. So PBL basically is hands-on learning, learning by doing experiential learning. Yes. 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 So yes, I come experiential this, learning, yes, and experiential you can learning. yeah. So you can put in put in a, a number of subjects in that. Right, right, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely correct. So I have a question, and I come to Miss Nagamani for that. The question from Mr. Arun: How about children deciding to do the project on topics chosen by them without any prompting? Uh, Ma'am, can you please repeat the question? The question is: How yeah. about children deciding to do the project? chosen by them without any prompting. Okay. Um, that is actually project-based learning according to yes. me. Yes. Okay. So if, if the teacher is deciding everything and the teacher is doing everything, then there will be no uh, connect between the project that they choose. Unfortunately, uh, when I meet the parents, uh, they just ask me, you know, like, ma'am, is the project for the parents or for the kids? So even that kind of cases also have happened with me. But if the kids are not choosing the project, uh, then that is not PBL at all, according to me. And um, the connect comes like this. Uh, you know, it's like when they choose the project, they get into the challenges that the people are facing in the society. They get into um, the kind of problem that the society is facing. And then they decide that, OK, we can choose this particular challenge or this particular problem. And then we can first collaborate on how we can resolve that particular problem or the challenge. So uh, according to me, if they choose the project or if they choose the challenge or the problem, then the classrooms will, will be buzzing. Huh? It's, it's like, you know, yes. that is the actual classroom according to me. And it has to be always like a construction zone caution. Huh? So because it's, it's con caution construction zone for me always. Uh, even on an online scenario for that matter, um, if the classroom buzzes a lot, that, then the learning is happening. Right. Good, 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 good. Wonderful, wonderful answer. Wonderful answer. So from this, my next question that comes to my mind is, so in a class, when a project based learning is happening, and there are different projects by different kids. So I come to Mr. Bharat for this, sir, uh, your answer on. So what are the challenges a teacher may face 
while PBL is implemented in the class? Bharat sir, up to you. What is your take on this? The challenges faced by teachers. See, I would um, be very frank enough that uh, we are at a time when everybody is sitting across the classroom. It's not across it's digitally today, but still, is born in the 21st century and everybody who's teaching was born in the, uh, sorry, is born in the 22nd century and everybody who's sitting on this side is of a different century. So uh, the big, biggest this problem that I feel and I often uh, encounter this is that the understanding for PBL with the facilitator. And what exactly is PBL and how this should happen? So like uh, ma'am, Nagamani ma'am had added earlier of deciding on the project uh, topic for uh, discovery. It, see, it is not essentially that it only only has to be children. It's the brilliant part is if it can be through children and children decide themselves, but it also has to can be a guided discovery. Mm. Wherein uh, teachers can guide uh, can guide the ideation stage at the ideation stage so that they can le at least reach their learning outcome. Mm. And this becomes the major problem. What is happening is when we talk about project-based learning, it is just another activity inside the school. Um, learning then takes a backseat and it becomes an activity. And this is the sad part of the entire approach. I feel that uh, the educational leaders, the school leaders should uh, really take, make an effort to understand that this is just not an activity, but the essence of education. And my understanding mm -hmm. and my fear is that PBL might just become another activity. Very well said, because, you know, the majority says an activity, but maybe to the teacher, it was a project based learning. It was a project is not just a simple activity. There's a project where there's a solution to the problem, their ideations uh, happen, their uh, thinking happens, and then they come out with a solution. So, uh, but it minimizes to a term called activity, which is a big challenge. Uh, so, um, Nagamani ma'am, your take on this? Challenges for teachers in PBL? Okay, ma'am. Um, the first challenge that I, uh, that I feel is, uh, um, you know, apart from facilitating the whole project, the uh, ideation come, may, may come from the teacher or not, um, but the, the major challenge is making the teachers understand the difference between projects and project-based learning. There's a huge difference. Okay, so for this to happen, uh, we uh, what I feel is we have to actually revamp the uh, whole structure that we used to have um, since ages, mm. as Vikram sir has said. Yes. Um, it's, it's very important and training, training the teachers is, is most important right now to make them very clear with, uh, I mean, to make them understand that there is a difference between the normal project, which is the so-called activity, and project-based learning, which is a structure given by, uh, you know, by, um, uh, um, what to say, uh, by a faculty of teachers uh, who've actually practiced it. Okay, so that is one of the challenges that I'm uh, uh, foreseeing if we get into this kind of PBL. Another challenge is, ma'am, uh, resources. Hmm. Okay, yes. uh, resources are very, very important um, and it is the responsibility of the school to some extent, um, but I, I would I would take it as you know um, forty and sixty percent. Forty percent is the school's responsibility, and sixty percent when the kids are coming up with their challenges and the problems, and they uh, they come up with their own project. Kids have to be equipped or kids have to be uh, trained in a very responsible way that, okay, these are the resources that I need for this particular challenge. So that is where very the important. collaboration happens. Mm -hmm. So resources is another challenge that I'm uh, foreseeing, ma'am. Yeah. Identifying what I need to solve, how to gather them and then come to a solution. This is very important. Very well said, ma'am. So Taruna, ma'am, your take on this challenges. Uh, yeah, as, yes, like uh, all my co-panelists have already shared that, but yes, uh, teachers have to be motivated and they have to be guided and because, uh, you know, at times it they also feel that, oh, it's a, again, something 
burden is coming up to us, which is apart, uh, I mean away from the books and something uh, extra we have to do. So we have to make it very, very clear with, uh, after training that this is not a burden, but this is you know uh, matching your curriculum with the project so that uh, your chapter is also done and the academics is not suffering and uh, uh, simultaneously the child is learning better in a better way. Secondly, uh, yes, the children, the children also have to be motivated because if you talk about the class, there are uh, brighter children, average children and below average children also. So you need to pull all of them uh, that they should be there in the, as a part of the project. That is where it is collaboration and teamwork which comes in picture. So that is one thing which has to be taken care of according to me. And uh, of course, teacher training is very, very important because mm. all teacher and children are not equipped, well equipped with the tools and the uh, strategy which we have to follow. So once they do it, they really enjoy it. That I have seen in my school. Yes, yes. this is a very important uh, challenge the teachers face because every teacher is not well trained and guided to uh, yes do to carry out the project-based learning and of course the equipments that are needed the tools that are needed that is also important so they have to do their homework prior that what is needed guide the children accordingly so that learning happens not just an activity but project-based learning happens so with this my next yes. question that uh, i foresee is uh, so when we execute this project-based learning in classroom and we observe the children so can we use this PBL as an assessment opportunity? So I come to uh, Mr. Bharat on this. When a PBL is executed, we observe the kids. So can this be used as an assessment opportunity in our country? Ma'am, uh, see every opportunity of observation is uh, assessment as you call. But I would say it is not primarily assessment that how PBL or these activities are, should be used. They should be uh, used to understand the children better mm. and make student-centric approaches and projects mm. and situations that these children can learn together, but differently. They can adapt their own learning levels in the same project. Uh, that is how I feel uh, probably PBL will be way more effective because the situation where our education system has been, uh, has reached today is that I got disconnected just a second. Yes, yes. We, we couldn't Am I that. audible? Now you're yeah. audible. Maybe the last yeah. sentence. We I'm saying, that, see, the education system, what happens is that we uh, take an assessment, give a score to the child, and that is where the learning stops. Mm. We do not uh, remediate in terms of how the development needs to happen from there on. Mm. And PBL, uh, PBL pedagogy, what that will help us is not giving a score, but to understand where the child needs to develop from here on. Because the new next project or the kind of... Uh, learning pedagogy the teacher or the facilitator is going to follow from then on will consider where the child is at the moment and how he or she needs to progress further so yes. that is my take on assessments is actually yes, yes, a little yes, different. yes yes thank you thank you so i come to miss nagamani ma'am your take on this as an assessment opportunity can we use pbl uh, Ma'am, what I uh, have understood or what I have uh, learned in my uh, PBL experience uh, is project based assessment is always a component of project based learning, ma'am. It's mm. not it's not taken as a different uh, thing at all. So throughout the five or six weeks of the project that the kids are doing, okay, each and every day is is can be considered as an assessment. We need not tell the kids at all, you know, like, um, uh, like okay, this is this is a test that I'm giving or this is a worksheet that I'm giving. No, not necessary at all. So it is always considered as a, as a part and parcel of uh, the project-based learning. Be it self-assessment, we may name uh, uh, the assessment in different ways, like peer assessment, self-assessment, you know, the formative assessment, whatever it is. But if the kid is able to understand 
um, that okay, I am in a right direction and reflect on what the learning is happening. Even that yeah. comes under an assessment. Yes, yes. Okay, so there is a there is a part of project based learning which is an, another design element, I should say. Hmm. Uh, we uh, we, right, we right. critique and revision. Okay. okay. So, uh, when the critique and revision is happening about the project that the kids have chosen or the or ideated by the teacher, mm. the critique and revision also is an assessment for the kids. It's a kind of peer assessment that the that the peers are yeah. doing in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So critiquing again. Uh, Wonderful. Uh, again, it talks about positive critiquing. Mm -hmm. So we are actually looking at the holistic understanding of one particular student. They have to give respect when they are critiquing positively. They have to respect others' uh, opinions or others' way of doing work. How are they collaborating? Their responsibilities, they have to put their points forward in a very open-minded um, uh, way. And the critique happens in a very positive way. And then they reflect on the concepts that they are learning in the project-based mm -hmm. okay. uh, okay. projects that they are taking. Okay, so that was wonderful. I mean, uh, thought and answers as uh, uh, Mr. Bharat said, assessment happens without required remediation. And Nagamani ma'am said that yes, peer assessment happens. So now I come to Taruna ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So can PBL be used as an assessment opportunity? I feel it's a reflection of the child's work. You know, mm -hmm. we okay. get the reflection what the child does. Mm -hmm. uh, there are different uh, ways we are assessing the child on uh, in these PBL projects. Mm -hmm. Like suppose if a child uh, records his message or uh, uh, on any topic on Flipgrid, so it it is again you can uh, assess the uh, the communication skills of the child on that, right? If the child is making a PowerPoint presentation, you can uh, see the IT skills, the AI skills on that. So you can assess the child on different parameters on different works what he does if he's making some video and he's posting and he's sharing with you you can again assess the child on uh, his, his skill his or her skills uh, suppose a pen pal activity with uh, some different country or some or in your own country you can uh, you know assess the child on the writing skills so there are n number of skills which can be assessed in pbls so i would say that uh, it's actually the reflection of the child which we uh, assess yes. and it's very easy to assess with project based learning mm. Thank you. That was a wonderful answer. Uh, so it's a mixed answer. Yes, required remediation, peer assessment. And it is, yes, it is a reflection of the child. So it is an easy for the teacher to assess and judge a child. Okay. So I come to uh, Mr. Bharat and I take a question from uh, here from um, the uh, Sonia Anand, an interesting question. So, and I, uh, I want Mr. Bharat to answer. So can PBL be differentiated? or include all types of learners? Your answer on this, sir. Can PBL be differentiated or should it include all types of learners? Uh, thank you uh, for the question. And in fact, uh, when we, uh, I was speaking about the assessments, so we have uh, hinted around the same. And definitely PBL, see it's, Again, it's not a standardized activity. It will develop with children and children will lead the way in this entire process of learning. So there's no questions about not being differentiated at all. See, what happens in a generic uh, world environment or the environment that all of us live in is that we all take our spaces and we all take our roles. And when there's a project that is being initiated inside a classroom, so each and every children will take his or her role in the entire project and thereby learn from each other. Mm. Okay. So definitely That's PBL or mm. this approach is uh, one of the better methods in which things can be uh, tailored for children. Uh, when we talk about the guided process through facilitators, so that is what probably a facilitator's work will be in this model to see that each and every child is able to take their role and they can be um, not pushed towards it, but definitely guided towards it. Okay, okay. Thank you. That was a wonderful answer for the question. So uh, from all this, uh, my next question comes is, uh, so there is a mentor. Uh, when a PBL is implemented in the class, there's a mentor, the teacher 
uh, is the mentor for the child. Uh, so the, uh, the next that we think of is, should PBL be structured uh, or there should just be a timeline and a child should be allowed to learn in their way? So question to you, Mr. Bharat. Should PBL be structured or there just should be a timeline where a child can be allowed to learn in their way? When I say structured, you know, there should be guidelines and we dictate the child to follow the guidelines. So how should PBL be? And uh, see, uh, one PBL cannot often be strictly, uh, strictly compartmentalized. We cannot compartmentalize the entire process. But definitely, both forms of approach would be used. There would be times when the entire process will be completely uh, student-led. Uh, in a like a flip model, it will be working where children will be taking yes. care of uh, their entire learning, how to learn, when to learn, what is the process that they will be following. And then to achieve specific learning outcomes, uh, the teacher would have to make a structure so that it doesn't go beyond the scope of the learning outcome at least. Because we uh, definitely have to uh, understand the semantics and the environment that we live in. So this particular approach would have to use both structured and unstructured uh, different projects. But any way approach cannot be strictly compartmentalized. We cannot, if we uh, tell the child not to deviate from the guidelines, then it will be extremely difficult for the child to really achieve yes. the learning outcome or yes. the essence yes. of PBL. Absolutely, absolutely. So the ideation doesn't happen if there's a, uh, if we are uh, guiding them continuously at every step, the, the innovativeness doesn't come out. I think yeah. you wanted to mention, mention that, sir. Okay, so uh, coming to Ms. Nagamani, Ma'am, your take on this with a timeline structured or no? Uh, Ma'am, uh, I agree with Bharat, sir, because uh, in the scenario that we are right now, uh, we should have uh, kind of timelines, um, but have that kind of flexibility at the same time for the kids to explore, for the kids to find out their own resources, for the kids to actually, uh, you know, ideate the challenge or question or the problem question in their minds. Mm -hmm. That flexibility should be given, but at the same time, we need to have that kind of structure also. And uh, uh, BAC okay. Institute of Education, uh, ma'am, has come up with a structure for uh, project-based learning. So uh, there is definitely a structure that uh, we can follow, which is not uh, which is not too tedious um, for uh, the PBL schools to follow. But uh, again, at the same time, uh, if there is no structure, there is no framework, then we will be our teachers themselves will be getting deviated with the whole thing. And forget about the kids, but the teachers also should have kind of, you know, a way that is shown uh, to them to follow. Uh, and that comes from the structure and the framework that is given by uh, the experts. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you, ma'am. So I come to Taruna, ma'am. Ma'am, your take on this. See, I agree with what my co-panelists have said, but with me, I'm a little different, you know. I mm. feel that the time management has to be taught to children. Mm -hmm. Yes, we need to be a little flexible, but then mm -hmm. uh, on the same time, we have to have timelines, we have to have, uh, you know, proper, uh, uh, you know, proper plan for our PBLs, uh, that how and when and uh, where, uh, after doing quite a lot of survey, then only we should plan the PBL and we should give timelines and we should follow them and implement them. But yes, we are in a different scenario these days. So we need to be a little flexible, but time management has to be taught to the children that they, they have to follow the time. Yeah, so we have PBL, to respect. what is very important is time management, where they learn, yes. but not very yes. structured again, because ideation has yes. to happen, but there has to be some yes. guidelines that help the teachers to guide the students. Good, good. Yes. So uh, I have a question and a very interesting question. So I will uh, from... Uh, in the q and so I'll uh, ask uh, Mr. Bharat to answer that. And of course, I'll pass on that question to everybody. How can we assess students individually in a group work? Hello? Yes, yes, sir. Your audible. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think assessment is not of the group. It mm -hmm. is of the child's um, role in the group. Okay, yes. 
Very correct. And I think um, the child's role, if we wish to assess how, how a child is doing or where does mm. he uh, stand within the group, all that can be done by the observation of the child independently. Yes. yes, the, yes. Uh, in learning, I think outcomes are important, but mm. the process of achieving those outcomes is even more important. And what PBL or the observations through PBL does is it lets us focus on the process. And independent observations are always good. The project uh, together as a team, as a group, they might have achieved their objective or they might not have achieved their objective. But still the role that each, each member played in that group is way more important. Yes, yes, absolutely. I agree. So, you know, observing them when they are doing, when they are executing is very important and uh, independent observation, of course. So the final may be achieved, may not be achieved. That's not important. What is very important is the entire process, the stage, the role, the child is involved in the you know, process. Yes, I agree with you. So, Ms. Nagamani, so how do you, I mean... When it is a group work, uh, where does the assessment of an individual comes in? And how do we do it? Yeah, ma'am, um, I go with observations as uh, Bharan sir has mentioned just now. Mm. Uh, but I have to add uh, a point over here. Mm. When, even when we are observing the kids, uh, the facilitator or the teacher, is she or he aware of what is she observing? Okay, so uh, and how is she observing? These two are very, very important. What and how? Uh, what and how? And kids have to be informed about this, ma'am, because um, uh, maybe in the form of a rubrics, and then they, she can display the rubrics on the screen or in the classroom on a physical scenario, and then tell them that, okay, this is what I'm going to observe for this particular concept mm -hmm. in the project based learning that you are yes, doing. Yes, 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 yes. Right. right. Absolutely. I think there's just a point to add, ma'am. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I go with Arit, sir. Okay. okay. So I come to Ms. Taruna, ma'am. What is your suggestions? Uh, absolutely right. The rubrics have to be has to be there. Mm -hmm. And yes, when we when we uh, talk about a project based learning, yes, we are assessing the uh, we are assessing the child. We are assessing the child as and when they are they are doing the work. It is like step to step step by step. The teacher is observing each and every child. Right. So um, uh, rubrics, well said, uh, Nagamani ma'am, that yes, rubrics has to be there and we have to uh, follow that. And um, that is how the observation goes. And uh, that is all from myself. Wonderful, wonderful. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I'm so privileged to have this eminent members of the panelists. So where we discuss, you know, yes, we do agree on um, independent observation is very important. The learning, the uh, final product is not very important. What and how the rubrics are very important based on which we can uh, observe and study a child. And then we, uh, we also identify his areas of improvements. That is why a PBL. So I think what we need to know in today's world is, or teachers to be trained is that uh, the process of executing the PBL is important, how they do it, how they use those uh, tools to complete the project that is given to them, whether it is their ideation, whether it is one taking up a leadership role, it could be peer-to-peer uh, -peer communication. It could be critical thinking. It could be all the 21st century skills blended in it. <coughs> I'll just so, add to this. Yes, I'll just yes. add to this that five E's are very important. That is engage, explain, mm -hmm. explore, elaborate, mm -hmm. and evaluate. So this is what is the reflection of uh, uh, project-based learning. Five yes, E's. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. The kids are engaged because they learn by doing. They learn better. They learn in their way. And in the process, yes, evaluation also happens. That is what is the advantage of project-based learning. Uh, and I think project-based learning actually is uh, one of the, because there are a lot of questions, so it is for them to, uh, uh, it is an answer for them, where many are asking, is it experiential learning? Is it same? Yes, of course, because what the child is experiencing by executing that project, the child is learning. And hence, the term experiential learning, the term activity-based learning, the term learning by doing, the term project-based learning, all goes hand in hand. They are same and we use different terms, but the process and methodologies executed 
planned, everything is same. And I think it is for different types of learners. Project-based learning helps for all type of learners, whether they are kinesthetic, whether they are auditory, whether they are visual. So that is why, you know, PBL is becoming very, very common in every schools, in every classrooms. And it is from nursery to grade 12, I must say. It's that common. Uh, I can take one more question. Uh, so this is from uh, Mr. Johnny. What would be an ideal number of PBL opportunities a student should have in an academic year? So any one of you would like to answer that? What will be an ideal number of PBL opportunities a student should have in an academic year? See, my answer would have been, see, every uh, subject has PBLs. And it's not that every chapter, sometimes it's a combination of chapters. Sometimes it is in one chapter. So I don't think there is any number to it. But again, um, if uh, Taruna ma'am can answer this. Very well said, ma'am. Sharmila ma'am, it's quite right that there, there, we cannot restrict to numbers. It depends on the topic or the subject which comes in flow. And uh, we feel that project-based learning uh, gives a, a, a better hand on uh, uh, you know, knowledge or experience. The, the experiential learning is more on that topic so we go ahead with that topic and uh, uh, the child enjoys and learns more and um, yes, uh, again yes. I'll, I'll come to this that there are four C's that is communication critical thinking creative and collaboration so this happens so the child learns and it is always better for the child uh, yes. uh, learning through PBL. PBL and the child is equipped with the 21st century skills yes, so there are two yes. people who want you to repeat the five E's Okay, engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluation. Evaluate. These are the five Vs. So I think we are the, at the end of session. It was a wonderful uh, panel discussion. It was a wonderful learning uh, from all of you. And uh, it was quite interesting. And every question is answered brilliantly. And I'm sure everybody has takeaways from this panel. Wow, uh, this was actually uh, quite interesting. I mean, when um, you know, when we started this session, I had some good expectations because I was hoping that I'll get to learn something new, and that I realized that I was actually underestimating my own expectations. I've got to learn so much from this, and yes, whatever uh, all the panelists have discussed, it is so much valid, so much relevant. Especially the part where we say, uh, are our teachers equipped? to uh, handle this kind of scenario i mean how much do our teachers know or how well do have do we have trained our teachers because our teachers who have experience of 20 years 30 years they come from that old uh, rote learning system and now we are trying to uh, convince them to train students in a totally different kind of system which they have not gone through and this is not something that you can learn overnight i mean i can very easily take a student to, uh, for example, let's say Golconda Fort, and I can tell them when you clap here, someone can hear you up on the hill. But how does that acoustic work? There is complete physics. So I can, I'll actually need my physics teacher standing over there and not my history teacher, which brings me to another thing that why only PBL, why not IPBL, why not interdisciplinary project based learning, where we teach more than one subject through a single project. And I'm sure that all the schools who are implementing this and the way you guys are implementing, I mean, I was getting excited when I was listening to your stories and the examples that you had. For example, that uh, the, the Brazilian food thing, I mean, uh, coming from uh, North India, one of the favorite food that I have is Rajma Chawal. Rajma comes from South America, Brazil being the largest country in South America. So it reaches through Mexico to India. So we can talk about trade. We can talk about food and agriculture. One is civics or political science and one is um, uh, partly part of geography and one is part of science. But then how wonderfully that collaborates and all while we are enjoying our Rajma Chawal. So yes, this was actually uh, uh, quite an interesting session. Now with the permission of uh, uh, School News, we can, I think we can move to the next session, uh, the next panel discussion. Uh, I would like to thank everyone over here uh, for their wonderful inputs. And next, uh, we are going to talk about our uh, 
next part of this discussion is where we bring in the critical thinking and problem solving how do we, how do you promote or how does pbl promotes critical thinking and problem solving solving for which we have uh, miss sonanda kesi who is the principal of uh, <coughs> i'm sorry of a nehru international school coimbatore uh, sonanda ma'am if i can request you to please take over and there you go yes yes thank you yeah good afternoon thank you um well, i'm just trying to check whether all our uh, you know panel members for this topic is here uh, let me uh, let's uh, let me just begin with uh, first introducing you to the other panel members today uh, we have with us uh, t padmavati ma'am she is a principal of fusion international school in hyderabad a very experienced person and uh, she's won several awards and i'm uh, you know i'm sure you you'll gain a lot more information when uh, she has when she contributes to this uh, discussion and we have uh, archana mishra founder principal of delhi world public school manindra gar and uh, she too has uh, done a lot of uh, you know contributions uh, towards education and uh, highly experienced and uh, we also have mr rohit dua managing director of little flowers group of schools in delhi so i welcome all of you panel members for this and uh, you. our topic for today is is uh, does project based learning promote critical thinking and problem solving and before we go on to this topic let me just you know give you a few uh, a little idea about how i came across the uh, pbl i had happened several several years back when our school was just moving on to an international syllabus and then you know they had this pro uh, project there where a child has to you know do a lot of uh, research and uh, come up uh, come across with a kind of a you know presentation at then of uh, one term and what was interesting was that you know there was a whole lot of things involved in that one little question and and a lot depends on the kind of question that was asked by the teacher because uh, the question cannot be that simple where the child can just go in at google uh, you know you collect your information and just put it across that's absolutely uh, not the kind of uh, a project uh, that you need to give so a teacher needs to think a lot about the kind of question you give uh, so that children do research they do experience they do a lot of maybe a, a lot of trial and error to finally come up with uh, an end result Uh, at the end of the term or end of the year so i thought it was something extremely um, uh, you know multifaceted like there are so many things that a child could learn by just doing one project and um, so to begin with let me uh, ask uh, padmavati uh, ma'am about uh, what uh, yeah maybe you could just tell us something about yourself too if you wish to and uh, tell us how uh, do you think that pbl would help in problem solving and uh, critical thinking project based learning will definitely contribute to a better learning of a child when we look at the bloom's taxonomy we feel that remember and understanding components are push to one level where they give enough knowledge the rest of things what people are doing what the students are doing comes under skill set therefore the project based learning people have to look at the problem from an above level to solve a particular problem that is the problem which is available in the topic has to be neatly designed in order to have a beautiful discussion on the topic it should have an extended title so that the problem can be discussed in a very clear way and there is analysis which is where there is a scope of analysis from analysis comes evaluation of the topic and how people are going to discuss the creativity behind the critical thinking problem solving will definitely happen when there is different demographies of people where the student is interacting with and how they are going to bring up their hard skills into the picture and how the personal attributes are taken care of if we divide project based learning into two parts say that is hard skills as well as soft skills the child should be able to understand the problem put it down save the data and understand the 
critical nature behind the problem and then they can go to the problem solving part of it with the soft skills with this learning happening at each and every step with both hard skills and soft skills problem based learning and critical thinking definitely will contribute to the learning of a student in project based learning and this is my opinion yes definitely since most uh, uh, projects that happen as a group so there's a lot of problem solving there you know then and there you know as and when they start off with uh, you know uh, doing that uh, uh, project absolutely ma'am that's so nice you know with the hard skills and the soft skills in, involved that's a good thing uh, ashra archana mesna what is your thought on that one how do you think uh, pbl would help with uh, problem solving and critical thinking is she there ma'am archana ma'am Uh, I, I think she is not here, ma'am. Yeah, she is not. Maybe she's not. Okay, okay, uh, Rohit. Uh, no, ma'am. Okay, okay. okay. Then I think we can move on to you, Rohit sir. Yes, yes. Do tell us what do you think? You can please repeat the question. Yeah, uh, how is it helping in? Yeah. Sorry. Please uh, repeat repeat the question, please. Do ask him. Yeah. How how do you think that uh, project based learning would help in? uh problem solving and critical thinking how do you think uh, okay so ma'am uh, problem solving as a new we got a new name pbl pbl helps student to uh, develop skill for living in a uh, knowledge based life and uh, it, and it will really help to live in the highly technology society which is going to develop especially after the uh, covid days so if we uh, and and if we compare the pbl with the A old school model where the student have to learn something for particularly design and uh, told what we need to know and the student have to memorize the thing and by the problem assign illustrate to use how we can use that a particular thing but when we consider the problem based learning pbl the problem will be assign and the child will identify what need to be know and and the and, and the and the child can learn and apply to solve the problem which will which will clearly help to develop their critical thinking mind and which will it will help to uh, solve the future problem which going to come in life in their uh, professional professional goals and uh, by the pbl the overall growth will be better if we compare with the old method and uh, and this will help sure yeah yeah definitely thank you so that that's true that's there is no memorizing involved and there's a lot of hands on learning there and uh, especially when they do a lot of research and you know that that's uh, uh, basically what uh, actually helps especially with uh, uh, project based learning uh, do you think um, you know uh, yes yeah, so maybe you could just continue with that yeah, sure, do you sure, think uh, there's some true learning involved when it comes to pbl you know what Do to that extent, do you think uh, students actually learn more? Yeah, I feel the students will through. learn more because due to the PBL, they have to research a lot. There will be not any pre-assigned uh, matter or content will be available to them. They will move more research. They will uh, to discuss with their peer group. They can organize more discussion sessions, GD sessions, and even they can discuss with their elders, with the seniors. so all this process will be led to more learning and and uh, and after this they can also write a research paper if I, uh, and if i share one of my experience when i visited some of the different schools in the outside india they have seen even the uh, student of grade 8 he is uh, writing a proper research paper and books if you can talk of the other uh, you can talk of uh, finland education system and japan and and in here as well we are starting new education policy so all these thing are really included the main thing how we going to implement that and how uh, even in the uh, i was present in the last session as well how the uh, teachers and the parents going to lead the child for the further learning so it's basically a mix of mama or the child and parents and i can say parents also play equal role especially in nowadays every mother acting as a teacher whether earlier the teacher was acting as a mother so both playing a very equal role so it's a, will be going to be a joint effort by all of them 
Absolutely, absolutely. I think there's a lot of deep learning and it's and absolutely true that teachers need to be trained to ask the right question. You know, that's, that's exactly the main uh, thing, you know, with a project mm -hmm. where the teacher has to ask the right question. Only then there will be, you know, a kind of uh, research happening and they do not just pick it up from somewhere and put it across, you know, that uh, to avoid that, I think uh, it's absolutely necessary that we need to train the teachers to do that. Um, uh, Padmavati, ma'am, uh, if you could uh, tell us what you think. About the true learning happening with the child? Yeah. Yeah, yes. actually, the, the learner becomes an independent reader. He will be able to comprehend a particular content and he will be able to put things in an order as to what is useful for the project and what is not useful for the project. To improve the skills of a child and in order to have a true learning for the child, the mentor plays a very big role here and show the direction to the student, whether the child should go interdisciplinary or whether the child should go transdisciplinary and how the project weaves around the topic. Apart from comprehending a particular topic, what is the reaction of the child and how the child is able to network with other students and how the child is able to use his skill for presenting the topic so that there is no plagiarism at the end of the day. It is not just a cut and paste work. If it is transdisciplinary learning, and by the way, I have to quote here, in a time machine, if we take, we have developed national education policy now. So in the other part of the world has already, is uh, really sure of their literacy skills, their finance skills, their technical skills, and other soft skills, whatever they are learning in the classroom. All these have to be incorporated in the, uh, in the project work of the child. It can also extend to a research-based uh, project learning rather than simply making it in a very confined way. And the dissertation and the thesis can be submitted. There is no age or a limit for somebody to get a good guide and a good student in collaboration with the other. And to top it up, we have we should see that the students improve on the leadership skills. And these are the employability skills which the child is going to face in future. But it is very important for this child to understand the purpose of the project. What's the purpose? Why am I doing this project? At the end of the day, in the real life example, where am I going to come across such a kind of scenario or with the available scenarios, how am I going to weave my project around it? And under what angle can I take care of this project with the available real life example? Learning has no end when there is a good mentor for this project. And the title of the project does matter a lot for a true learner to learn to the extent possible and what he should learn. Absolutely. I agree with you, Padmavati, ma'am. I think you just covered so many things with that. Very good. That's really good. Uh, I think when you were saying that network with other students, I mean, there's a lot of things that they learn. You know, there's a lot of soft skills that they learn while doing that. No, what, what, do you, what are the other skills that children do learn while doing the, uh, doing the project? Like, of course, leadership skills are there, no doubt. Yes. What else do you think? Children uh, participate in intellectual discussion. There is no limit. Absolutely. The students have to participate with the discussion inside the school. They can even participate in discussion with the other teachers or different subjects. And they can have, in the when, in, when through internet, it is all globalized. They can even fix appointments with various other schools across the world and they can talk with their peers in uh, on the other side of the country, peers on the other side of the world and see how, what is happening on the other side. It doesn't require a travel physically. Even mental travel will help the student a lot to understand the circumstances and what how the project has to be taken forward and what is that the students are wanting to incorporate in the project without any plagiarism. This networking does matter a lot with the, does matter a lot in improving the intellect of the child. Absolutely, absolutely. I agree with you there. I think that's that's so essential also, right? 
Especially yeah. when, you know, uh, I remember when we were doing that uh, International School Awards, they were given some projects to do. They had to, you know, contact children way outside there, you know, uh, their comfort zone. They had to talk to people who didn't know English properly, but they still, <laughs> still did it and they enjoyed it. They learned a lot. Uh, there was a yes, whole lot of learning there. Yeah. If they become doctors at the end of the day, you can't wait for them to speak your language, isn't it? We have yeah. to go to their language and somehow manage to get the patient diagnosed. That's yeah. how the, pro the process That's absolutely learning will be helpful for the student. You can't expect us to work throughout in one particular place. In order to explore, we need to, explore, we need to travel, we need to understand. Right, absolutely. Rohit sir, what do you think? Like networking, I, you know, are, are there some skills that uh, you think children will learn? Um, and the, by the than, PBL, oh, it will improve the reasoning skill. It will the more increase the uh, more uh, 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 more the uh, uh, problem solving problem and the decision making skill. And the student can analyze how the things will go on in the future things. And 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 and, and by this, this will also help students to grow their m m mindset and to uh, develop a new prototypes as well. As you can see, the AI is uh, really increasing nowadays. Everybody thinking of the AI thing and the coding part, everybody doing the coding training. So first, the child has to analyze their interest. And as per their interest, their passion, all these things should be included before starting any project. If we start working on a project, and then and then all this learning can be recognized as the uh, promotion to the next class as well you can say the promotion and the grade can be given and this is a whole process it will take time it will not be flipped in a day or a, or a month this is an initial process and if anybody is planning we should plan from the early childhood group as well from the from the class group uh, pre-primary to grade five that will be more beneficial which we are trying in our school as well we are uh, we are doing some teaching method changes from the grade one, we're not doing any change in grade six, seven, eight, not doing sorry, a small stage, major change is going on in the pre-primary, is going from last three, four years. And we are uh, and we able to see so many improvement and even the parents are sharing their experiences. Uh, the, all the learning pattern is changed, even the assessment plan is changed. And even the, from last uh, two year, due to the COVID, we alternate use so many and we can trial. Uh, in this COVID, if we plan anything for productivity is there, we can do trials. So uh, all the teachers absolutely, are uh, absolutely. Yeah, if we uh, and and even uh, if, if I share my example, uh, we have tried around uh, six or uh, six different type of practices, and some are from outside India as well. So in mm -hmm. and some of them we got very good result, and some trials are still going on, and. We should use this time as a positive time as well. And we hope this will go on and school will start soon. This is a some different topic we're going yeah. on. So, so yeah. this will really positive thing and every, everybody has to involve it. That's absolutely yes. true. Especially now that with the, with the online classes going on, uh, there were times when, you know, the children are having too much of a screen time. So we, uh, it's absolutely important, right, that right now, I think we need to uh, absolutely give some projects there so that it takes their time off the screen and get them to do some kind of hands-on, uh, you know, uh, work activity, mm -hmm. you know, research. And, you know, maybe even speaking to, uh, uh, you know, some, uh, uh, you know, what shall we say, VIPs elsewhere. Yes, or, you know, some people can who are involved. Planned. They learn a lot that way. And, you know, the thing is that, you know, uh, uh, you know, that just gets me to the next question. The thing is, uh, I've often heard that PBL helps with all the 20, 21st century skills. Like it could be, you know, I'm sure all of you have heard of uh, the 60s of education where they talk about creativity, collaboration, um, you know, uh, citizenship, everything, you know, comes in over there. So how do you think that um, this... Uh, PBL helps with the 21st century skills. I mean, uh, we are taking our child into the future. Now, does uh, PBL help uh, help you do, do that? What do you think, sir? Oh, Ma'am, uh, this will uh, surely help. Again, I'm starting the same. It will help. But we have to huh? plan how we, are, how we are planning our child in the next 10 years. Even after the 10 years, the scenario will change. 
if we uh, if we see from 2001 to 2010 the scenario was different and now is totally different so the future every day new technology will come and the thing will change but 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 uh, but the, by the pbl learning the child will be future ready he can handle all the different uh, scenarios how to face different uh, challenges and yeah. how to mold himself for the new era which is going to come you can say after 2030 So the new the new era will start after that we will be more to techno savvy there will be more uh, uh, freelancing jobs and the regular job will be no, no, not there and we have to create more entrepreneur instead of a job seeker so we have to plan some uh, entrepreneur skills as well and and we have to offer more skill education as a as the as a as the ib board having more skill education thus pbsc also introduced so many vocational courses and the skill education there are so many online training also going on for the teacher and student as well if we say last uh, three days back cbsc launched wonderful program for the with, with the partnership of uven for the uh, career development and they are introducing so many new skills such so one of the skill subject is of uh, financial marketing which is going on in so many schools in that the student can even start the uh, online uh, uh, broking can be done with a wonderful software by nse which some of my students also doing and there is one thing coming uh, cryptocurrency which is we cannot talk about whether it is uh, allowed or legal or what but it's very new to learn to all the skill there's so many new apps are coming some of the students are doing uh, trading just a mock up and by this they can learn wonderful finance skills they are being some apps so some of the new things we are students are trying and teachers also learning with them now this all things are uh, sometimes students share with teachers ma'am i am doing mm-hmm. this thing and you can share with others so this i shared by the, one of our students on the, uh, who is doing just uh, uh, the, 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 the dummy trading on the cryptocurrency just really new uh, they are getting some uh, the, the dummy coins which can be used and they can purchase all the real cryptocurrency they can learn how the market will goes and up down really fruitful from uh, for the commerce student so they can do hands on which is not available in the books so absolutely and that that's so current you know in another few years we will have jobs that doesn't exist today even today right. so i think children are getting ready for that yeah, and, you know, even so many really students fast. yeah even so many students opting for ca so ca is totally moving to the freelancing the cs is available so all the uh, job criteria is changing courses are same the jobs are seeking even so many teachers now are, are demanding we will teach online we will not join physically so can you share this type of job this is also new thing coming for teachers as well absolutely i think teachers to learn in the process right when this is going on absolutely thank you sir uh, 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 padmavati ma'am what do you think are we leading our children are, you, are we making our children future ready with this if we resort to project based learning research oriented project based learning interdisciplinary transdisciplinary learning and learning to learn then only our students will be future ready for the jobs because these things see doing project based learning is a responsibility of the child it's a responsibility of the organization to allow the children to find their own direction the orientation part itself belongs to the mentor but the rest of the part how the child wants to do it depends on the child in this 21st century skills and the future ready they can definitely be able to choose the company which they want to join maybe they can go through the profile of the company because they already know how to read a particular document they themselves have written this project based thesis because they will be able to read the profile how much the company is making does the purpose of the company meet the purpose of the student of the employee and how they are going to take the company forward is it and the projects can also be game based projects or activity based projects they need not be projects yeah. everything related to content they can as well go and interview so many people and write down the document on these particular interviews which they have conducted on a particular demography and how the absorption of the statistics is going around in and around so that the students are able to understand the changes 
and how the junk food is being changed in how the junk food is changed into healthy food all these that means there is a change in the society now there is a change in the learning there is a change how people are earning money earlier there was no not this much money available around therefore now the money resources mm. are so much that even financial literacy is a subject for the students where they are doing in 11th and 12th therefore there is variation in doing the project based learning the project based learning will definitely contribute to the intelligence of the child it will push their iq eq and spiritual quotient also and the personal attributes of the student will also be addressed very beautifully because in the school time children are students are not allowed to copy from each other are not allowed to ask during an examination but the next day soon after they finish their college they are going to contribute they are going to work in a very collaborative collaborative way therefore see whether they, nowadays another income what mr rohit has told that cryptocurrency now there is stocks which are going to happen stocks and shares has become an easy word and not like the word before people have been going into stocks and shares then how is a particular company rising and falling and what's making the what's a fundamental analysis of this company is another example of how students can understand a particular project therefore all these and doing a research studying it for themselves is very very important in the beginning it's not that every project has to be directed by the teacher they can also pick up some more projects so that they are future ready they are ready to face the job world outside and they should also know if they are ready if this project based learning will ignite in their mind the the options in the careers which are available that would be fantastic for the child to put forth his career in for a job unknown to him until today because after school they will be have to they will have to work for about 35 years with the last education done maybe take a graduation or engineering or medicine or whatever it is even if it is acting nowadays we see that people are learning every day and super specializing in their acting because the gestures of the body of the sen actors will itself signify that the super specialization only can survive in the future that's my take on future ready uh, for the project based learning and the students imbibing future based learning wonderful wonderful ma'am thank you so much that's really good i mean i know how uh, important it is to you know go and through that um uh, i did hear one more okay um there's a um, yeah okay i will do that i'm just trying to get some of the questions from uh how can we develop uh, students interest towards study besides curricular activities um so can uh, some uh, can uh, rohit sir give your take on that one ma'am as for me the both things are equally important we can't shift the child totally on the study apart from the focal activities even in the online phase students are involving in both of the things if we the the overall approach will can't be completed just with the studies uh, if uh, and, and and if if anybody doing only focal activities then we have to think the equal ratio both for the both is important and gone right, are those right. days where curricular activities or curricular studies are different from the study which is going to happen cbsc is requesting all the principals to incorporate joyful learning experiential learning in the student so that we do not separate the concept from the joy you know we can even imbibe pt classes along with the project and we can even see that um, the the physical education classes are very interesting and there is some lesson or something which can be incorporated because very it it is it is very very important to see that there is no hard separation line between studies and co curricular activities or extra curricular activities Absolutely. gone are those days where we uh, where we separate study and now it's done and now we are going into uh, play and now this is intro this, this is project based learning there is no hard and fast rule that why a project based learning project a long term project should not be given for a pre mid term or a mid term or an uh, annual examination 
why a teacher should have that liberty to a facilitator should have that liberty to see that one year long project can be taken for a post midterm examination or for a final examination we can all we cannot always run behind memorizing the questions and memorizing the activities also are memorized these days that the demarcation should go madam if an english math science and hindi subjects are there for example social studies subjects are there we can have a combined project and the marks can be shared now it's time we change our report cards also we cannot have the same old report cards where Very true. other people have been uh, have been doing it since ages gone ma'am even ma'am even in the nep the new holistic report card is uh, said by the board and the uh, education ministry so i think we all should be planning for that as well yes that's really helpful for student and there will be report card will go on from grade 1 to grade 12 when 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 a child passed on from the school they should have whole report cards all have certificate given by the school only the child should not ki there can be easy a digital record can be prepared so we should come up with this as well we can prepare our own rubrics for the report card and we don't have to mm. we can in fact make a progress report instead of a report card for this and schools can always opt for customizing the report card for this for the for the students in their own school they cannot they need not have the same report card as their neighborhood school they can definitely go in a very creative way to incorporate all the rubrics make the report card progress card very self explanatory so that the students can understand and Absolutely. let the let the progress card be a profile book for the student so that the child can check his own progress after an academic year or so and that will be useful for him to know how he has taken his learning curve exponentially ahead very important not to discriminate between studies as well as uh, co curricular activities yeah yeah and uh, there were times when i used to have the student led conferences you know where the student himself talks about okay i did this particular project did i enjoy it or not yes i did enjoy it if i did the child you know gets to talk about what he has done and in a way it helps a lot because the parent it's just done in front of the parents so the parent too is um, happy to understand how the child went through this uh, uh, this project was he happy doing it did he learn anything you know of value there and a whole lot of and, things that comes out of that yeah absolutely and ma'am we should we should never think that all projects must result with a success they can absolutely. be projects they yeah. can be projects which are not successful and that is a better learning for the child when the feedback is being taken and how the feedback is going to help the learner as well as facilitator as to why the project is not successful there are about a thousand ideas around coming around for entrepreneurship but not sometimes not even one idea will be successful so it's very very important for a learner to undergo that strain in order to give a good project report it need there can be critical thinking there can be problem solving but the problem need not be solved always there is no hard and fast rule that the problem has to be solved at the end of the day that will be an even more a better yes. lesson for the student yeah that will get, get them to think and to research and to, you know there are there is no you know sometimes there's no conclusion to that in that yeah. sense of the word absolutely and there was somebody who had, yeah uh somebody who had asked about how um one minute how we can improve uh, no, okay before that i just came across um how uh and nowadays parents focus on academic rather than curricular activities how can they be convinced convinced for the same uh well okay, uh, i didn't I get think the question when, ma'am i didn't yes. get the question okay the 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 question is um nowadays parents focus on academics more than curricular activities how can parents to focus on other things as well other things like project based learning or any other activity yeah curricular activities yeah i mean yes, yeah every we got to inform the parents the change in the present scenario we have to equip them with information we have to we we should see that we conduct meetings we can't 
for the sake of a parent, we cannot spoil the future of the student because these students are overnight going to go to another country to pursue their higher education. This is the point where they are supposed to, this is the point where the school management comes into picture. When the students go into other universities across the world, they will be lost. That's the reason we see, we have to show, we have to give the student his dream. We have to show him and give wings for his uh, project, for, for wings for his studies. He can't uh, snatch away his livelihood to go to another country and work. For that, we got to counsel the parents. We got to talk to them a number of times, explain them. Only the only that the parents are hardwired. But other than that, parents will understand because they do not want anything untoward to happen with their students, with their children. That is the reason why they want to stick to academic. If you explain very well, yeah. definitely they will be able to work hand in hand with us and there will not be any hindrance in going forward with the national education policy or with the globalized education policy. Absolutely, ma'am. That's true. Rohit, uh, sir, what yeah. do you think? Yeah. Ma'am, this will uh, do really you want me to repeat the question? The question is fine with the importance of the cocoa activities. We've already answered this one. The point again. Does this will uh, really improve the overall growth? And when the child opts for the both thing equally, will uh, nurture him into a wonderful citizen? And uh, when he has the knowledge of the uh, academic and co activities, we can, and if anybody not involving himself in the studies only, so we can uh, uh, grade him on the basis of co activities as we are doing for so much many uh, court students. And if anybody student doing any uh, research work in the coding and uh, robotic as well, so we can uh, give them grade on that as well. So we can uh, give this um, uh, as per the uh, uh, new education policy, the new care system will come. As per the credit system, the child can be really benefited in future if we can uh, re replace their work in the cocoa activities and the and some people uh, activities into the grades. So this will be a ready uh, fruitful for students. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Ma'am, there, uh, uh, me? ma there is very one uh, interesting question coming by one uh, participant. Uh, especially when chi children are doing online study, what do you think? How can we keep them focused for a longer time. Why should we fear? Why should we keep them focused on the online uh, cameras for a longer time? <laughs> we should try to keep them engaged, engaged even without we, even without the facilitator in front of them. The activities have to be created so nicely woven around. Now the COVID is there. We cannot go back on this. That we have to understand. How are we going to live along with this and see that how we are going to change our activities, teaching, learning along with the student. We cannot expect the same old pre-COVID terms to come along with us. COVID is there, it will be there. It has changed our learning. This, uh, see, look at the webinars now. These are webinars happening now, online. Yeah. Earlier, 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 we have to attend mm -hmm. the uh, school, yes. school news, fruitful event, different places. Yes. Like Goa and Udaipur, and now we are doing on every Friday, and so yes. many webinars are conducted by school news as well. Yeah, ma'am. Therefore, we we have to live with this. We cannot, and we have to even on. It's a challenge now. This is a challenging year for the for the principals, for the teachers to see that you include also, and there is an inclusive right, education so, yeah. also along with it. We cannot say that students should be excluded. Yeah. They should be included. As I that said earlier, we have to take also. out the learning and the positive factor from this uh, the difficult phase we are going on. Yes, we have to search okay. the, every time positivity is there. Now, see, we can even give in gaps and discuss with the students after the school hours. 
it's not that the teacher has to be free it's not the students right students are always free therefore it is for the students to come to the teacher approach and you know there are breakout rooms there are so many facilities given in various microsoft teams what we use as a platform and even uh, even i have to mention one thing the uh, screen time can be also managed every time parent teacher and even me i have to think That's about the so increase screen time so we yes, can sir. replace screen time with the switch of the screen we can just using the uh, speakers we should not use the headphone by the students yes. we should use the uh, speakers and these are some basic things and we can switch of the screen just listen your teacher or any video we have so to increase the google. listening skill yeah. yeah google home and the and, and amazon alexa really helpful to interact the child can learn by the interaction instead of doing things mm. on uh, 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 even my uh, younger kid <laughs> He is yeah. just uh, two to two years old. So he try to interact with Alexa only. So we're not giving him a screen time. So it's by doing just the virtual interaction. So there is a small oh. correction on this. There is the interactive screen time is not considered a screen time. Passive Correct, screen time like YouTube, films, uh, and all those are the screen time. When elders watching with. TV and the yeah, child sitting makes, beside. Uh, because interactive screen times are never called as screen time that is not allowed passive screen time is very dangerous for the students they themselves do for hours okay. together even we, we it's okay to take some information from the internet and discuss with others use technology there are audio video messages which can be posted to other friend form group for every good learning there is a good method and good way Isn't it? Some precautions no, no, no. can be taken, but the yeah. One uh, one one more question is there. I'll just um, you know uh, just ask. Uh, there was one more question. One second. I'm just trying to uh, get to that. Oh dear. There was. Uh, I'm I'm just oh, trying I to see the get it. <laughs> I saw that question. Now I can't see it. Hmm. Um. well i think it was more about you know problem solving or you know uh, conflict resolution something like that was there okay. but now i can't find it uh, okay. anyway i, I what read I, that how can conflict yeah. resolution be incorporated in holistic education yeah yeah project? i think something conflict, like that it's it's a uh, conflict resolution is more or less you know problem solving right like, you know so what conflict, do you think conflict resolution goes hand in hand with negotiation skills and the personal attributes of the child if a conflict resolution conflict should be very is required to have many ideas mm. if there is conflict there will be resolving there will be resilience there will be negotiation skills ultimately people have to be having convincing skills in order to resolve a conflict it's not everybody has a conflict in mind everybody has an opinion an opinion will result into a resolution that resolution in turn will go into a conflict so in holistic education it is it is the spiritual intelligence of the child which works a lot in managing oneself spiritual doesn't mean only bhagwan and god spiritual means managing yourself is also a very good personal attribute the first level is we try to talk with the inner voice with ourselves therefore that's how the conflict resolution should happen and in holistic education if there is no conflict that means people are not having opinions madam if there is an opinion there will be a conflict definitely it will be there yeah right right thank you yes ma'am thank you so much that's so so insightful uh, yeah rohit sir what do you think what is your call on this we just have another 5 minutes to go rohit sir what do you think uh, ma'am ma'am wonderfully answered there is one uh, more question coming if if you have if you have permission we can take by mr bharat tiwari he just uh, can ah. read out that please okay hold how on how come i can't see minute. the question <laughs> that box huh? yeah how can we improve students conflict resolution uh, uh, he actually uh, asked a wonderful thing if i ask on you by your permission ma'am sure rohit sir please go ahead yeah, you please. can read out the question yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Actually, he's asking: Are we really creating a responsible citizen or an e-slave with a remote and some other individual? I'm really wondering what would happen down the line, ten, twenty years, with this hard-nosed pathway. So, uh, Mr. Bharat, uh, even Ma'am also answers later. We are not making e-slaves. 
but if anybody child really interested to perform any e learning and we can we can even want to do coding robotic and the critical thinking stuff online so he is not called as a e slave but after 10 15 years if this is the only thing for learning if we are doing learning online so many online courses you can do from india in the uk and us so we will not call it as a e slave uh, but we have to use this practice very ethically uh, and we have to as a as a parent teacher we have to monitor our students and child how they are using all these facilities ethical practice is really important so for this purpose the parents and teachers really need to play a very important role we have to follow all precautions for safety for the e learning all the uh, safety protocols and what the child going and uh, what he uh, learning from different ways so everything is easily accessible the monitoring is really important if we do a good monitoring the child will not come at a e slave do not call it a slave so and the thing ma'am you want to mention it's, uh, can i have the question once again with a couple of minutes yeah uh, ma'am the uh, question is uh, under this framework does one evolve for uh, homo sapien to a e slave has been hard nosed i don't uh... are we and are we really creating a responsible citizen or an e slave with a remote than some other individual honestly honestly speaking the reins are in the hands of school it is they who are going to create good citizen they have to take all the stakeholders into confidence and they are supposed to create good citizen there is no choice we are not left with any choice except to create good citizens of our country we cannot expect people to go haywire and feel very happy that we are teaching them the content a perfect balance of personal attributes and the hard skills of the student can only make the student a very good child and if we note in with great care we can see that the students in rural areas have more life skills than the students who are working in the urban areas very true very uh, they they are very, very smarted true. very a uh, few things which we learn because those people have a different set skill set with them therefore those skill set have to be balanced and this country needs all kinds of people it doesn't mean that only people in the cities are flourishing and people who in the rural do not have any skill set their skill set has to be recognized by people by the teachers and they have to be given the right work or the right job which they can do that's how we can yeah. improve projects can't be everything happening in the classroom with the phones or things like that the project even a it has to take them yeah absolutely absolutely. absolutely i think that's so essential you know they they they, they do learn a whole lot out of that very true yeah. and there was one question where somebody asked how long should the, the pbl go for you know what is the duration for it the duration of the pbl you can yeah. have a long term project you can have a short term project it all depends on the title yes. the direction and how the student is going to go with it you can have a one year yeah. project also wherein intermittent yeah. the student has to be assessed definitely yeah. the student so every... has to be assessed in inter- intermittent i think there should be a point where the teacher uh, you know understands you know how far the child has gone on the project that kind of monitoring is required no doubt yes monitoring uh, without monitoring see students are still learners they haven't achieved yet therefore there yeah. is a difference between a learner and an achieved person or an accomplished person therefore they need particular guidance guidance Otherwise, is needed ma'am yeah guidance where they are going We have to guide which is uh, which, yes. which is uh, correct which is not correct right? and how they can follow their uh, sometimes they uh, start something and not get a result yeah so we can guide them to something new yes. they can start again now what we are doing is also one project isn't it <laughs> it can be taken as a project see we are having certain limitation we are having certain guidance otherwise we will talk anything under the earth isn't it it's not like that a question is being put for us to maneuver in a particular direction and after that again question is picking be picked up isn't it yeah uh, yes thank you ma'am and uh, you know i think we have sort of uh, reached our uh, end time 
And I must thank, uh, you know, Padmavati ma'am. I mean, there's so much that we could, you know, uh, understand from you. And there's so much we need to, uh, you know, thank learn you. from you so much. And uh, I, I wish... <laughs> thank you so much, <laughs> ma'am. Nice, nice to know, thanks to the... Mr. Rohit and Mr. Nanda on this uh, platform. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Rohit, sir, you too. That was so good. Thank There's you, so much of insight and, you know, uh, so much of good contribution. One of our members couldn't make it for this one. But uh, I'm so we glad that you know, yeah, there was so much of learning with both of you there. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you. ma'am. Thank you, School News. Right. Thank you, School News. Yeah, thank you, School News, too. Thank you so much. Thank you, panelists. I mean, this was such a wonderful discussion. And it is a, uh, you know, I'm feeling bad that we have to cut it short because this is something which I really want to go on and on listening to you guys. Uh, the, the kind of uh, ideas that you were sharing. I mean, Rohit, sir, you took my heart. Uh, in the beginning itself, when you said that, let's not call it project-based learning, let's use the term problem-based learning, because that gives a completely different perspective or a, a new dimension to the entire discussion and the way we look at it, which is actually quite interesting and important. To be very honest, even I didn't think it from that perspective till now. Uh, uh, but Mahmati, ma'am, love the way you speak and the ideas that you share and whatever you said it's it's really wonderful one Thank takeaway you. that i uh, got from all that was uh, it was said in indirect ways you meant that in indirect ways and i'm just rephrasing that entire thing why should we always focus on jobs i mean let's create better humans pbl actually creates better humans than better resource people jobs were a requirement for the industrial revolution and we have seen we, we have done wonderful in that field but now it's over now we are in a different field altogether now we are in a different world altogether and we need a different way of implementing things so uh, i'll not take too much of time but yes there is one thing that is you know i'm kind of itching to say that the last part e-slaves that uh, triggered so many memories within me because i come from that whole uh, journey where when I was born, my father gifted me a small device, which uh, eventually evolved to become a laptop. So that was, I was born in 1983 and laptops were not there, not invented back then. No LCDs, no floppy disks, no CD ROMs, nothing. So we had a different kind of system altogether. ZX Spectrum was a small device that I had. And when I learned to do something, I started typing on something which would eventually become laptop. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have been a director of one of the top five companies in the world and I was director Asia Pacific for technology research and development before I started my graduation. I was a 12th pass wow. kid and I was sitting in Singapore really? working for clients like Microsoft and Nestle. I don't know how many of you remember that me and Mary Maggie were uh, on Maggie <laughs> Rapper, there were photographs. So those pictures were selected by me. I did that project in 2009. I was not a graduate back then. I was a 12th pass pacha. Why were I was able to do that? Why did I reach that high position and where 40 IIT student graduates, MCAs, MTechs working under me, under a 12th pass kid was because I was using technology since I was in class six. I learned programming in class six. By the time I reached class 12, I was actually selling software professionally. And immediately after 12th, I got my job. Never went for graduation, never went to a college. Even today, if I've entered a college or university, it's only to teach, not to learn. Wow. So e-slaves is a, I don't think it's a good term. I mean, if a person yeah. knows how to use the technology or whatever is coming in front of you, you can win the world. With this, I would like to thank all the panelists who have shared such wonderful knowledge with us. And we move to Miss Priyanka Mehta, who is going to talk to us about some um, ideas uh, that we can implement in the classroom along with her panelists. Priyanka, ma'am, over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ruprai, sir. It's a pleasure listening to you always. It's also charged up. And thank you, uh, Ravi, for having given me the last session. The fag end is always hardest to hold. So I'm hoping that the discussion from here is uh, interesting and we are able to add more value to the discussion that we have, uh, you know. Um, I, think if you can uh, look at this thing, I, I want to say something. Yeah. Uh, wish you a very happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Ravi. Thank you. That's, that's it. Thank you so much. 
And that makes this session even more special, I guess. All right. So uh, are my panelists on board? Uh, Pillay, sir, are you there? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Oh, wonderful. Nice to see you. Sanjeev Pina, sir? Yeah, I am there. I am there. All right. And uh, Abhilash Gautam? Abhilash Gautam, sir? You're saying? Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Uh, I have three names. Uh, Ravi, is there anybody else you've added no. to the panel? I just want to know, are you attending this session from a mobile phone or a laptop? Who, me? Yeah. No, no, laptop. Have I? Are you able to see all the four speakers on the... Uh... I have the speakers view on. Okay, so you could actually do that gallery view. Yeah. So that I have can... done that. So, okay. okay. So, uh, all right. So, is there anybody else you've added to uh, my session? Uh, because I have only three names. Uh, Dr. Pillay, Sanjeev Sena, Abhilash Gautam. On the screen okay. right now. All right. Now I have Dr. Sunita Vashish. All right. So um, happy to be uh, discussing with you. Uh, welcome on board. Now we are on the last lap of the discussion, but it makes most uh, meaning, I feel, because uh, from what all discussion I heard so far, we have understood that uh, why PBL is important and why, uh, you know, what it is all about. But I guess we are going to be here discussing the most important part. How do we handle PBL in the classroom and make it more meaningful uh, to the children, to the learner, to all the stakeholders, I would say. One little perspective I would like to bring in here is that PBL alone does not benefit the, the child or the student. It it's, it's a wholesome learning. It starts at various points and is even taken home. Now, with that point in mind, I would just uh, like to start with a brief introduction. I'd request each of you to please uh, introduce yourselves with a little thought about what it means to you uh, when, it's, when, when we say PBL and classrooms. What, does, what, does, uh, what, what, what is your mind uh, throw as a picture in front of you. So let's let's discuss with that. I think that should set the pace for uh, understanding in the classroom. I request each one of you to please keep a track of time. You have two minutes to uh, for the first introductions. I would say we must uh, also um, kind of keep in mind that we have we have questions to answer towards the end. So let's make it um, quick and let's make it talking. Yes. So could I request Dr. Sunita uh, to start with first? Uh, namaskar, yes, Namaskar. Namaskar. And we feel very happy birthday, ma'am. Thank you so and, much. And thanks to School News that they, uh, they have given me this opportunity because this is one topic which is quite close to my uh, working because, uh, you know, PBL for me is an experience not only for children, as you said, it is an experience for teachers also because it is a kind of research-based methodology where children are learning by experience. And when they are researching it up, we as teachers also come across so many things. So it is always a two-way learning. It is basically hands-on experience. So whatever we are experiencing in life definitely goes deep inside and that develops into core concept. And when we are close to core concepts, the application automatically becomes easier for children. So PBL is always, always a preferred methodology of learning because when the children are given this opportunity, it becomes like a, a long uh, term experience for them. And when it is a long term experience, definitely whatever we are trying to teach them as a concept, definitely we also get an ease. We also get an upper edge. And uh, when the children are experimenting, we are not there to bother about the kind of uh, skills they are developing because whatever, what all skills are needed in, as I was listening to the previous sessions also that we are preparing them for the future. So if we, our approach is futuristic, for sure project-based learning is going to add some flavor to it because they are going to develop different types of skills which will be needed. We want that the children, what they are studying today should be beneficial for them in times to come, in the future to come. 
and definitely this kind of an approach this kind of an learning give them a platform to understand things better and uh, for them it will be like developing core concept which can be applied later in life the ultimate aim of education is not to make them literate it is to make them future ready it is to make them like apply the same to the real life situation and when they are experimenting when they are doing some projects when they are researching things definitely that will be more applicable to the real life situation so this is from my side ma'am thank you so much dr sneeta that was lovely i do agree and when you said two way learning it makes absolute absolute sense dr pile your view sir thank you very much and uh, happy birthday to you thank you so much well thank you very much ravi for inviting me and i would like to consider a few things before considering pbl one thing our own education which happened where the teachers used to be transmitter of knowledge and we were passive receivers and of course during my time early my school days also there was a moment to shake away from this system constructivism started and all these things happened but it was not happening even now when we are talking about pbl also rot learning is the what that happens even in the online classrooms i have observed but i would like to bring everybody's attention to a research outcome in 2015 and the outcome was a paradoxical crisis a couple of paradoxical crises one of them was massive unemployment among educated youth and the other outcome was massive shortage of employable youth that was the paradox that was in 2015 so because of this research there was a renewed interest in shaking away from the traditional method and going to active learning and learner agency came into picture ib started learner agency in pyp program as an essential strategy active learning became a part of i mean active learning was propagated by educationists and pbl is part of this active learning where there is an involvement you remember there was a chinese proverb and benjamin franklin repeated that proverb tell me and i forget teach me i may remember involve me and i learn it's exactly the same thing this is what our jidu krishnamurthy also mentioned he also said the same thing experience penetration into the heart of an experience this is what exactly it is that is it so in learner agency there is a movement from teacher led or teacher centered class to learner centered class and it doesn't end there it moves on to student driven or learner driven learning so that is what happens so in pbl program based learning these things happen student agency is developed students take the voice choice and ownership of their own learning but at the same time i do not believe that it's a laissez faire approach it is not at all a laissez faire approach it has to be regulated so far as we have a curriculum we have a syllabus we have board examinations and the board results predominantly control higher education and employment so because of that there should be a control and regulation in pbl also so we should have an abcd approach in making the there are driving questions for the project abcd approach is an approach that we use in creating objectives a for actor or audience that is student b for behavior behavior is for learning c for conditions and constraints the constraint is the syllabus and examination system that we have and the condition actually time frame that we have the syllabus that you have to complete and d the degree of learning the degree of learning what exactly 
uh, the students need to know even in the Bloom's taxonomy which level they have to achieve. So accordingly, if we decide this objectives of this problem-based learning, this is going to uh, bring wonders and this is going to be an excellent learning. More, of course, we can talk as we talk again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Pillay. That was really, really interesting. Uh, Sanjeev, sir, your take, sir. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. I uh, wish you a very happy birthday. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, see, uh, I have a very different opinion about PBL. Uh, it's not uh, PBL. Uh, if you see uh, Indian education system or ancient Indi Indian education system, where there were gurukulas were there, students were sent to those gurukul gurukuls, and they were supposed to do variety of works. And that is what we are trying to do right now again, where collaborative learning, learning by doing, experiential learning, these are the buzzwords these days right now. We are so, uh, but. Unfortunately, post-industrialization, entire uh, education system has changed. British, when they came, English has become dominant, it dominated the entire education system. Again, rot learning has come into place. Uh, uh, otherwise, our Indian education system, we already had this, had this one. Uh, if, I, if you ask me what benefits the project uh, PBL integrates, knowing and doing, Students learn knowledge and elements of the core curriculum. They learn, but also apply in their day-to-day -day life. PBL refocuses education on the student, not the curriculum. It is student-centered, not curriculum-centered. And I think there is a complete shift in education going on. And uh, it is rewarding our students such as uh, rewarding our students with drive. It is giving drive to our students, passion. It is giving creativity, empathy, and resilience. And these are the things which are not found in textbooks. These all things are found with experience. Uh, I think uh, the core idea of this project-based learning is to solve the real-world problems and make that teaching and learning meaningful. Wonderful, wonderful. That's really nice. In fact, I was just about to connect with that, the thought that I guess uh, we all need to uh, be proud of the fact that uh, our gurukuls, our uh, ancient learning systems is all about project-based learning. So it's not only the zero and the other things that probably we initiated. We did initiate a lot of learning from uh, uh, in the past, wherein our children were hands-on to so many things. They were taken away from their natural, uh, the, the, you know, the, the comforts of the home to a natural environment, put there, made the equity came in, the concept of equity came in where there, there were people from different uh, uh, you know, walks of life, but they were all together in a gurukul and they worked for the guru, doing all mean jobs for the guru. So in fact, that probably set in the, the right kind of learning. So I totally agree with that. Now, coming from that, I feel we've understood that we are all on the same page, that uh, project-based learning is something that is totally, totally student-centric. Now, my question to you, and I'm playing the devil's advocate here, that do we agree with the fact that it's the teacher who designs the project? So, are we actually keeping the student in mind when we design the project? Are there any challenges there? And what could be, now we're all leaders, we all lead progressive schools. So when we get into this frame where we are, uh, we, we call our schools futuristic, forward-looking, implementing project-based learnings. So do we even know the kind of challenges that a teacher faces or a student faces while the project-based learning is implemented. Uh, the major thing that I want you to comment on is that when a teacher designs the project, is it really student-centered? And if there are teachers listening to us, I'm sure they would want to know what are the things that they can keep in mind to make sure that the projects, they help bring the children on board Children come to the project with their own resilience, their own thought processes. So any tips, 
anything that you've been doing in your uh, schools, which can be of learning to us. So if you could start with Dr. Pillay here. Sir. Yes, thank you. Certainly, um, it's a tricky question, certainly, because we have board exams, we have syllabus, and the results of that are also very important for us because students' future depends upon the score they have. So for us there, certainly the teachers also have to continue. That's why I said last time also, it is not a laissez-faire approach where things will go the way that it can. If that happens, you know, a lot of things will happen. A lot of problems we will face with. So uh, let the students come with their project, no problem. Let them decide their project. Teachers can find the learning outcomes from the projects. That's possible. And those learning outcomes should be matching with the subjects that learn curricular subjects or disciplines they learn. Actually, it's a very good project for transdisciplinary and interdisciplinary approach. Uh, if you look at the IB PYP programs, the transdisciplinary units they make actually project-based learning only. There, you know, they find, I mean, outcome for math, outcome for English, outcome for science, outcome for everything like that, even for social, uh, you know, I mean, soft skills. They find outcomes and train the students according. I mean, the students go with their projects. And if certain things cannot be taught within the project, they will uh, have a standalone approach also in that, that they, they go with that one. So it is important that teachers also have to have a say in that. Let the projects come from the students, give the students the opportunity to decide their projects, but the outcomes should be, I mean, decided by the teachers. Otherwise what will happen? The students will not learn the curricular content of it. We needed to teach them the curricular content, which is an obligation for us. So because of that, certainly there should be a pattern to be used. Actually, it's an approved pattern even in the um, in project based learning. Uh, those who are advocating saying that there should be a launch, that is an entry event of the I mean, project. And in the entry event, there are driving questions given by the teachers. It's not by the students, actually. Of course, students' input is also taken. There's a process called the Charette Protocol, C H A R R E T T E. Charette protocol, where you know you bring in the whole team together and present your progress to the students if you're stuck somewhere to the whole team and get their input also and modify your approach. That can be done actually. So the questions should be open-ended questions that will match with the key objectives of the learning, should be provided to the students. So that is a launching event. And the second one is. I mean, I certainly go for an interdisciplinary approach. It is projects are really good for interdisciplinary approach. If they are taking up a water project, if they're taking up a, an expedition or exploration, there are a lot of things connected to that one. I think uh, one of the speakers earlier mentioned about having uh, those connections actually, which is possible. And whatever is missing from there, we can actually uh, I mean, handle in the classrooms also because project will not be the only thing that will be happening. The other classes also will happen there. We can handle them. So the second level is building knowledge and skills. That's the second event of the pro, I mean, problem project based learning PBL. In that one, reading happens, research happens, teaching by the teachers also happen in that one. Guest speakers come in. I mean, externship is done. Externship is the I mean, uh, internship only, but for the junior children less than eighteen years, as they are not supposed to legally go to work so extension the word extension is used they are actually associated with some uh, actual professionals for example an engineer is taking care of them or an accountant is working with them or i mean a structural engineer is working with them a doctor is working with them so this type of extension is possible i mentioned the shared protocol that is possible and after that they actually are making that's an evaluation. There's an evaluation stage also. In the evaluation stage, the, they're pres presenting their products. Products may, does not mean that there should be, I mean, physical products. There can be other products. I mean, uh, there can be, there are uh, the, I mean, writers, uh, the photographs, everything are products there. They're presenting their products. That is in line with the driving question. And the teachers are checking if these are in line with the, 
the projects they have the feedback feed forward and feed up approach should be taken feed up means the goal the already set feedback is to tell them where they are standing according to their work progress feed forward is a suggestion to them to do what next so this approach to be followed so there is a review process there and there are some accidental and incidental by products also that also can be taken which we have not planned but they come up they also come so we can take that one so finally the i mean uh, the developing the time sorry i skipped that part i, I think the developing time there should be this approach of plan do check and act option pdca so that cycle that is an experiential learning cycle that cycle is to be used so their feedback feed forward and feed up to be used finally they are presenting their products that is an evaluation that's an assessment where we check if these students have met the objective set they are answering the driving questions or not if they are not answering that also okay, in research or in phd also you have a hypothesis you can go wrong with the hypothesis you don't have to prove that the hypothesis is correct to conduct the research the why and the what are important here so that is presented so evaluation also happens here but the only challenge that we will have is to connect it with the curricular content of the syllabus that we are supposed to teach this is what i want to say about it Thank i you. agree and it keeps coming from you that we tied up with syllabus and we've got boundaries yes we have but then that's all that's what we are here for i think a lot of creative thinking is required for us to Uh, you know where we'll be able to manage these boundaries and we'll be able to manage the creativity within these boundaries very rightly said sir and a lot of learning wherein you put in a lot of tough jargon for me to put up with but interesting uh, interesting cycles of learning and assessments um sanjeev sir coming to you sir what do you think about uh, the challenges and you know how teachers should take on the understanding of pbl uh see ma'am uh... uh i come from a boarding school background uh i am heading a boarding school uh here we students and uh, unfortunately we are missing our students from last one and a half year uh we stay here as a community uh, suppose uh, the school newsletter you are designing a school newsletter so we do we don't outsource anything we do it internally the english department the students from english department the students from hindi department we all collaborate ict the for designing ict in the same way the art department who they come out with for design helping us so they, this is the way uh, a project is done at the same time collaboration is done uh, interdisciplinary the people from different departments collaborate between each other and do it yes uh, being a principal of the school you need to create a culture when whenever you go and ask a teacher that you have to you have to say if that you you say your teacher that you have to change the methodology of your teaching because your teacher loves going and standing in front of the board and finishing his syllabus that's the easiest thing a teacher can do in the classroom but uh, being the head of the school leadership you need to create a culture that the there is a paradigm shift in teaching learning process you see our ncf national curriculum framework 2005 it also says same thing experiential learning was there that time also and in 2020 nep 2020 it has completely changed so you have to convince your teachers you have to motivate your teachers you have to teachers uh they will then they will come yes they have pressure in for completion of syllabus that is in class grades especially in grade 10 11 and 12 but there are certain grades like grade 1 to grade 8 you are they, being a school we give complete freedom to teach us how they are going to transform their syllabus how they are using different methodologies uh, initially there may be issues from the teachers but i don't think you once you create a culture once you give uh, their certain requirement whatever requirements they have i think things can be done very uh, not easily but you can change the and and this type of the, the things like project based learning learning by doing experiential learning flip learning all things can be brought in, into the classroom wonderful thank you sir um sunita ma'am 
Yes, ma'am. Same question. What do you think? How do, uh, uh, when the project is like, uh, if it's the teacher who's designing the project. So where do you think are the challenges? How is the understanding that is going about? And how do you in your system um, get to balance the, the challenges and the implementation of PBL? There are two, three things, ma'am. Uh, like when we say the teacher need to design a project. Yes, definitely the teacher, they are at a higher strata. Uh, they have a better understanding of the concept. So they can be instrumental in giving a layout, a thought process in the way, the way they are throwing questions to the students and igniting their mind. And in case if the students, uh, like they pick up those questions and they are getting ignited out of it and they are giving certain proposals. We should outrightly not deny their proposals. We should definitely let it be an interactive sessions with them. And uh, finally, you can conclude. I don't say that it should be a monologue from the teacher side that you design a project and you give it to the student because there are certain instances where the students will take it as a burden and will not be inclined towards it. But when you're giving them an opportunity to open up, when you are asking them their ideas, their views, and then with the collaboration of, with the students only are designing a project, definitely these children they will be inclined towards completing that project wholeheartedly. Because, you know, we are no more sage on stage nowadays, gone are those days. We are now facilitator. And when we say teacher, I say, no more we are teachers also we need to become mentors where we know the core strength and the weaknesses of the children as teacher though i agree completely agree that there will be challenges uh, because of the teacher addressing a huge group of students say 40 50 students in a class it is very difficult but when you become a bit observant definitely the task is for the teacher that you they need to be observant they should know the weaknesses and the strength of children and when you are like targeting the students that way, you know, the weaknesses and you know what kind of uh, pro like skills need to be uh, sharpened in a particular children. You can definitely make a heterogeneous group they, or as such the class is a heterogeneous group of students. All have different kind of abilities. They are all different kind of learners. Some might be visual learners, some kind might be aud uh, like auditory learners. Some, but everyone, when you're making a group, you need to ensure that, first of all, the students, when they are given value, that you are accepting their ideas also. The children, they feel like uh, that they are being valued. So they'll be definitely inclined. And then when you are giving, assigning them a project, it should be a kind of group which have all different sets of students so that they learn from each other. It is very important. So there are certain things the teachers are not able to deliver to the student. But when they're interacting in a collaborative way, when they're interacting with each other, they can develop a better understanding because the students, they are at the same level of understanding. And when one student is explaining other students certain things where they are guided towards one particular research project, their understanding definitely increases and they are kind of open also with each other. There are certain hesitations with the teacher, but when they are interacting with each other, they are not hesitant. So that gives them a platform. So I'll say the teacher should not uh, should not be the only one deciding the project. They should always welcome the ideas from the student and it should be the just taking uh, the entire opinion of the house and then constructing project because, you know, ultimately, as Dr. Pillay said, they need to meet the learning outcomes also. So if we give this free hand to the student, there is a possibility that the, we don't come across the uh, achievement of those learning outcomes. That is also essential. So it is we as a like uh, guide by side, we need to be there with them and let them explore the world. There is a possibility, ma'am, that the student will give us better clues to explore the world because, you know, we have a definite mindset of completing the course, as sir said there is always a pressure of completing the curriculum. So they might be, the students are not under that pressure of completing the curriculum, so they will come up with some innovative ideas. Then we need to be guided by their side, guiding them the right way, time-bound, 
by definite rubrics to be like the project how it has to be assessed those rubrics also need to be intimated to the student so that they design their entire project in such a way that they come up to the expectation of the teacher also meeting the learning outcomes also and developing the core concepts also so it has to be a cumulative effort because ultimately the course has to be completed in time ultimately the core concept has to be developed so this is how the teacher should take a lead into it wonderfully said and i quite agree with most of the points but you know again i i am here to contest on two things number one pbl individual learning group learning what is your take it has what to be your take on it and uh, what does it target on and number two are we concentrating on pbl to be an assessment tool or are we are we helping the children to learn through this so if you i mean if you continuously want to understand what project is the child going to do and i decide the project or i let i i create an outline for the project uh, so that i may be able to avoid award rubric so that i am able to assess the child where is the learning in this your take sunita ma'am first actually ma'am it cannot be like it should not be an individual effort i'll say because individual when it is an individual effort it becomes monotonous for the student and the child will be targeting only one particular type of skill the child is good at so it should always be a group project it can be integrated project it can be a group project i don't mind that but when we say that we are giving them line of action uh, uh, through rubrics until and unless we tell them that there has to be certain outcome i don't think the research will be oriented that way we need to give them some some target to achieve it is not that it is only the we are making it as an assessment strategy and when we when i say it is it has to be having some rubrics i say it when it is an assessment it is assessment for the teacher also even we are learning with them so until i don't say you give them a structured thing i only say when you are designing a project there should be some openness with the student also but at the same time there has to be some time bound structured assessment also associated for something where otherwise what will happen the things will go haywire the children with definitely uh, as uh, mr sinha said that we had gurukuls earlier and we were doing we, we were for everything learning by doing everything every tidbit was done by the student there but do we really think that in this society we'll be able to do that right I, ultimately the student is answerable to the parents also we are talking of uh, an era where we are talking of holistic progress card so we need to give them certain sets of instruction some achievable i, I love that i love that point and i'm going to take this back to sanjeev sir sanjeev sir let's answer this question we we taking examples and taking pride in what gurukuls did can we can we look at can we really correlate it to the times now your answer sir um, uh, see what i say uh, I, i was saying gurukuls were there they were uh, the focus was not on rote learning the focus one was on all round development of the child even uh, the objective of pbl is holistic growth of a child It, uh, the uh, the uh, <clears throat> objective of pbl is holistic growth of a child yes when it comes see it is self learning in groups perfect okay ultimately see uh, at least indian education system you are tested uh, as a group you will never be tested you will be tested in examination you have to clear competitive exams you have to get we have to understand the dynamics of indian education system we have the entire whenever the examination completes the entire india looks for admission in st stephens the entire india looks for admission in sri ram college iit medical this is what so self learning has to be there yes through pbl in okay the project can be given in groups but the teacher who is a facilitating he has to monitor it when i was a student i still remember the projects were given to us in vacations i was in home in in those vacations how i did the project it is nothing the day when we school reopened we used to carry all the projects and project inspection day we had english teacher used to he never asked us how we did the project he never asked that how this hindi project was done but those days are gone right now 
things have become very transparent technology is there everything is there so self learning is very important these day at least in indian education system self learning yes project is one medium it is a medium a collaborative approach we have through projects and this we are learning this is my take wonderful so uh, if uh, if we if we can say that we are trying to train our through project based learning we are trying to train our children in in a way that they are able to think critically think creatively problem solve things uh, i'm sure we will all agree that we are preparing them for a situation where they will be able to handle some authentic real time problems now and in future uh, you know the kind uh, the times to come now having said that how do you as leaders uh, actually take all the st- stakeholders on board uh, because we all understand that without everybody's understanding the implementation to a program cannot be effective in a classroom so if if at all i'm looking at giving a project to a child i have to understand that the child is going to take that project home there's going to be a reaction at home there's going to be a resource problem the child is going to be facing and we let's not only talk about the the great schools in great cities let's also talk about uh, the the sit, the schools where, where children are not privileged to have certain uh, access to resources so as leaders what is your what is your message or how do we understand and how do we go ahead with this uh, you know where we where we have to uh, take all stakeholders and what and how do you do it in your own schools so very quickly uh, pile sir okay thank you i was wondering if it was towards me actually yeah it was <laughs> okay well i mean uh, before answering that one allow me to uh, compliment with what uh, mr sanjeev singh has said gurukul system was a holistic education holistic preparation that was suitable for that time the same model can be adapted for our time also we can we have to update according to the need of the time i mentioned about it in an article that i wrote in the education world in july edition of the education world where i advocated for criterion referenced assessment system where i mentioned that this one and uh, the system in greek um, ancient greece actually in athens so i mentioned that so certainly in project based learning this systems can be connected number 2 i also do not consider project based learning an end product it is a tool it's a strategy it is something that we use in the classroom for better learning we have an out- we have an objective for achieving those objective project is a tool this is one of the things that you have to learn and one more thing i am considering assessment is not a stand alone component assessment is part of learning and actually you are informed by assessment the teachers are informed by assessment the students learning actually if not assessment you cannot get assessment is not the written examination alone assessment is what's happening inside the classroom assessment for learning and assessment as learning these two things happen then you are getting informed so this is also there so it is not a stand alone now let me come to uh, your question whether how i would i mean uh, convince the stakeholders see stakeholders are interested to see the final product usually let me tell you honestly they are not interfering with our academic freedom just to check that what kind of the thirds you are using that is the prerogative of the school leadership and the faculty and i am sure actually i am a leader who allows faculty members to experiment with their own methodologies also finally what i want is the final product you have to achieve your differentiated and equitable learning outcomes that is very important actually i i remember in actually i was present in the other sessions also where one of the i um, mean uh, participant one of uh, there was a question actually about how you can relate to this to differentiated learning so it is very well possible it has to be there actually every individual is different so we have to differentiate it equitably so that differentiation that learning outcomes there should be 
a common learning outcome for everybody and you also have to target some thing extra for those who are able to do it certainly i will be able to convince my stakeholders with the projects by showcasing the learning and the artifacts received from this learning to the stakeholders so it will be a wonderful experience for them also to see that their kids have come up to this level and produce this level but if they do that one the rote learning the learning will not be sticky learning will go away within 7 days actually you teach somebody within 7 days they will go down to zero level but when they are involving in the learning process themselves when they are taking their own uh, ownership in their learning which is happening nowadays actually I, i i want to incidentally mention here that the online situation is a very good opportunity to make this paradigm shift where the learners are taking ownership in their own learning so that will happen once they have depends once they take ownership in their own learning the learning will stick in their mind so there is no need of an extra preparation for examination though examination is still i mean is required there is no need of an extra preparation for examination because this learning will stick so i will not i, I will not find any difficulty in convincing my stakeholders that's my answer to that thank you all right very well said sir and i do agree that uh, you know the end product of course is the driving force the why becomes uh, more important than the what and the how always all right so taking from here um, uh, dr sunita ma'am if i could ask you that um, what kind of a project if we were to discuss here what kind of a project uh, is something that a student would never want to forget or you know what is the best design of a project for a student that's not that's the first part of it and while deciding if i say that okay this is the design i look at how do you rate uh, the creativity critical thinking and com- uh, the organization of information within that project do you get do, do i make myself clear uh, do, yeah i i'll take uh, yeah. last year ma'am we switched to online uh, teaching mode the virtual platform very quickly and there it was a challenge because at our school it is always like we give them some projects and finally we have to showcase them in an inter school expression series where we divide the entire thing into three days and then there are certain exhibits and simultaneously there are performances so it is kind of open to schools also it is open to parents also so what dr pillai said the end product when it is visible to the parent definitely the parents don't interfere in that day to day process right but when it was on the virtual platform it compelled us to think what to do and how to get things done and how to involve the children because the school, students are not in your vicinity they are sitting at a far off place but we were really really i'll not forget one project which was assigned to grade 6 students that we wanted them to do some integrated project and the teachers they came up with an idea let them design a quiz and conduct a quiz for their own classes and it was integrating almost all the subjects and to our utter surprise the class was divided into say five groups or six group as per the strength of the class and each group consisting of say six students seven students they did a fantastic job making the questionnaire using the technology conducting the quiz where each and every child was involved in that project and then finally the when the conduction was going on all the teachers the subject teachers of that particular grade were sitting together and they were analyzing it so we were really surprised that a student who has just entered into grade 6 all of them could correlate like communicate with each other collaborate with each other through virtual platform and they have presented this show so we cannot challenge the potential with the children it is always always there it is only that you need to provide them with the platform this was ma'am really it was very surprising for me when i observed the way the students they were confident their communication was wonderful their question structures were wonderful their presentations in the form of ppt conducting the quiz was wonderful so 
तो फाइनली द टीचर्स ईच एंड एवरी टीचर वो सिटिंग देर द सब्जेक्ट टीचर सिटिंग देर दे कुड ग्रेड ईच एंड एवरी चाइल्ड ऑन दैट पर्टिकुलर प्रोजेक्ट so we can say that they were creative also they were collaborating they were communicating and they were using the technology also where is the deficit wonderful so a uh, great insights i would say uh, um, to this uh, entire talk that we've had and uh, i would say that uh, to sum it all if we were to just pick up do i have a couple of uh, maybe a minute or so uh, team if you can just guide me we can take one last parting okay. comment from each panelist can we do that or are we up for the time please go ahead all right thank you so uh, great uh, the, the, we understand that uh, you know uh, it's all about us where we drive the learning in the classrooms i want to say that as leaders we've all understood that the perspective the timing has to be set by us and of course the execution has to be with the teachers but let's not only keep the accountability with the teachers let the children own the learning also so wonderfully discussed and also one thing i would like uh, to just put as an information here that um, it's it's only one part of us who feel that a pbl can be given to a class and an age group we have now examples from the west wherein age across people have been grouped and they've been given a project to complete and all these age groups that has they have got great camaraderie and great understanding of relationships between the different people between different uh, children and that was a great learning too so before we thank you so much everyone for being on board before we leave can i please request you for one um, you know a parting comment on what exactly is required the the one thing which is most importantly required to change the classroom to implement pbl effectively sanjeev sinha sir you first one thing uh, uh, the school uh, should have the vision to do it and the school should create a culture culture of culture to do this one again the school should have uh, being a leader of the school uh, i i have to empower my teachers to bring innovations in the classroom again at the same time systems and structures provide necessary infrastructure necessary support necessary professional development to my teachers and the entire team pile sir okay um, one thing that i want to say is every experience is a teachable moment so everything that we do at school is a project from everything that we do we can create objectives and we can create learning only one thing that we have to be very careful and we have to inform our teachers is the drawback the most important drawback of problem based saving that is social loafing there is a term attached to it that's called a social loafing social loafing means sometimes one student in the group will work for everybody others will not work otherwise looking actually looking at the capacity of the group they may themselves bring down the objectives degree or level and they will decide a lower level and a lower expectation that is another drawback of the hello that's okay that's okay continue yeah that's that's what so once we take care of that one once we decide that our objectives can be met every experience can be turned into a project including covid 19 wonderful thank, thank you so much dr pele sunita ma'am wonderful example dr pele i really appreciate yes definitely we have taken covid as an example i'll say ma'am in school as sir said we need to give certain amount of freedom to the teachers to explore and the motivation for which i say the school leaders are very very uh, like uh, much very much responsible that we need to look for that what is the requirement from the teacher side we need to see whether we are able to train them well and we are able to motivate motivate them well so that they can explore the world from their perspective and implement the same in their class because uh, we need to lead by uh, our being the role model same is the applicable in the classes also so from my side it is freedom and motivation to certain extent and yes for sure training and as dr pele said we need to keep an eye on that that it should not reduce the expectation level also 
Wonderful. Thank you so much for all being on board. And one little comment that I would like to add is that for everybody who's listening to us and is planning to implement PBL, please don't hesitate to allow children to bring their passions and interests on board when you're planning a PBL in the classroom. They are the ones who have to execute finally for you. So make sure that their opinions and their interests are taken care of. Because if a child can love to watch a movies back to back, I'm sure, they can also love to do your uh, assignments back to back. What the only problem that we face with them is the level of interest that we're able to create in the children and how much would they own their learning and let the, own, the owning up come from them. So do keep that in mind. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, School News. It's been a great uh, learning here talking to uh, my fellow uh, colleagues and great, great learning. Uh, Pile, sir. Your jargons amaze me. I have to find out where do you get them from. And it's really, really difficult. Every time I meet you, I think I have another, another benchmark to get myself updated. So keep me inspired. Thank you so much, sir. Rupai, sir, all yours. Thank you, ma'am. I think we can make this our project <laughs> to uh, you know, uh, get as much information as we can from Pilesa, especially from where he brings these amazing uh, uh, jargons. Uh, I, I, I actually fell in love uh, with him every time when he speaks. I have heard him at other platforms as well. Uh, PBL is not a tool, you know, and uh, PBL is a tool and not an end product. Such a wonderful thing. I mean, uh, we have always been saying the journey is more important than destination. Not sometimes, but always journey is more important. And uh, in, in such a beautiful way, uh, Pile sir has uh, put it forward. And I am actually... Uh, so happy to uh, attend this session for one more reason. That is, every single panelist that I have attended, uh, I have listened to since uh, uh, we, we have started this session. And the clarity of thoughts that you guys have, it's amazing. Probably that's why you are where you are. And that is required. That is what we need for our uh, teaching fraternity. Uh, I'll not take more time uh, you know, talking because now we need to move towards the conclusion also and we are left with just 15 minutes. So how about we move towards the last part of our discussion where we conclude our today's session. Thank you very much, panelists. And I would like to uh, request the panelists for our final session. Uh, Mehta Ma'am is already here. I would request Ms. Sananda and Dr. Chaudhary to please switch on their cameras and come forward and uh, we, can, we can start with our final discussion. So in this last part, what we are going to do is it's, it's more like a highlights package where we are going to talk about whatever we talked about. So this is a kind of a review session. I would request all, uh, my, uh, all, all, all the moderators who have been here uh, since beginning, uh, starting with Dr. Sharmila Chaudhryji, to share the highlights of uh, their sessions. So Dr. Chaudhry, can we start with you, ma'am, please? Uh, you are on mute, ma'am. Sharmila, yes. ma'am, you are on mute. Yeah. So do you want me to share the slide or, uh, or is it okay if I just say? I think the slide is already there with the team, uh, Ravi yes, sir. Yes, yes. Yeah. okay, okay, yes. All right. So uh, thank you uh, at Fridays in School News. It was a wonderful session. A lot of takeaways, a lot of uh, learnings for all of us. So uh, the first few sets of takeaways from the first panel was PBL can be easily implemented in virtual classrooms also, which is very, very important because many think that uh, PBL can be done only when children are in the school. No, absolutely not. Even in virtual classrooms. And it's a must. PBL has to be implemented. The second, the second takeaway is it is appropriate for elementary students. In fact, in the discussion, uh, Professor, uh, Mr. Bharat and uh, Ms. Nagamani, they mentioned that it should start from the elementary level that is right from kindergarten, nursery, and to be continued till grade 12. Uh, as far as the teachers were concerned, not much of challenges faced by the teachers to implement, except that little training is needed, little handholding by the teachers. And yes, how to use the tools or the equipment that is needed for, to, uh, to set up at PBL in the classroom. The main disadvantage of PBL and why PBL today in school is that it promotes 21st century skills, whether it is critical thinking, whether it is problem solving, 
whether it is communication, whether it is collaboration, whatever it is, these skills comes only when you are doing an activity-based learning or learning by doing. The journey of a PBL actually leads you to the end of where your skills are enhanced. So it's one of the tool for skill development. Yes, since we are observing, the mentor is observing, PBL may be used as an assessment opportunity also for children because it's not that the exams, the formal exams where we assess a child, that's not right. So every subject throughout a year, a child is doing PBL. It may be a group work, it may be a peer-to-peer -peer collaboration, but yes, the child is observed and it is very easy for a teacher to assess a child as to what he likes, what is his ideation, what is his innovative level, whether he can take up a leadership role or he can improve on the skills that he lacks. Why PBL today? Because it helps the students to learn in their way at their pace. The only thing is the mentor has to fix a timeline for the project. That's also they learn time management also. That was one of the biggest takeaway of uh, the first panel discussion session that children learns time management when they're given a timeline and given the project, even at their choice if they're doing a project. PBL also incorporates time management and is a tool for all types of learners. Yes, whether they are kinesthetic, whether they're auditory, whether they're visual learners, for different types of learners, PBLs can be incorporated. It helps all of them. And also it can be included for inclusive learning. We had a question from the audience whether it could be for differentiated and inclusive. Yes, PBL suits everybody and every school must implement PBL so that you know it is easy for the learners and it is actually student-centric and children learn by doing and this is what is experiential learning they experience that entire journey of doing the project and whatever is the learning outcome mapped in the lesson plan they achieve that so pbl is the need of the hour implemented in every classroom in every schools at every uh, you know country also thank you that's that's wonderful. Uh, very well summed up uh, the discussion of 50 minutes in just uh, a few bullet points. Very nicely put up, ma'am. Thank you for this, you. Sharmila, ma'am. Now, can I uh, move to uh, Ms. Sananda for her part? Sananda, ma'am, over to you. Ma'am, you need to unmute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah our topic was does uh, PBL help in problem solving and uh, critical thinking? Uh, most definitely, yes, because they do learn a lot of, uh, you know, skills, you know, uh, apart, you know, like a uh, lot of hard skills as well as soft skills. And uh, then uh, one of the, uh, that's true that uh, they do learn uh, leadership skills, no doubt, and how to collaborate, how to accept other people's opinions, reasoning skills, and a whole lot of things, you know, while they just do that one project. Apart from that, uh, we also got to see that uh, children become independent learners where they research, learn more, do a lot of uh, learning of their own, and uh, you do help them uh, to become independent learners. And another important thing that we did come across was that uh, networking with other, uh, you know, so children, other schools, sometimes, you know, if some projects might get them to speak to other people, maybe the general public too. And that helps uh, a lot of uh, ways in which uh, they could uh, uh, you know, collaborate, they could speak to people, they can understand you know, people's skills and things like that. That helps quite a whole lot of skill. Uh, you know, uh, it helps them a lot, especially with this problem solving. And uh, then we do, uh, in a way, in, uh, you know, uh, PBL does help with uh, making them future ready. And so that, you know, all six C's are taken care of. And so it is definitely making them um, future ready. And uh, of course, another thing is, you know, it helps them find their own direction. That was a very, very, uh, very uh, important point here because uh, they do uh, find their own passion that way and uh, learn to find uh, their own direction. So it helps, uh, definitely help, it goes a long way in, uh, you know, uh, come uh, you know getting some kind of true learning with PBI. Wonderful. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for that. Um, moving on to Priyanka, ma'am. We'll take just one minute to share the PPT. Just one second. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, somebody wanted to know what the six C's are. 
Five, five E's actually. Uh, are, are we talking yeah, about no, the five? No, 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 uh, no. I was talking about the six C's and not the, the five six E's. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. Okay, say so, uh, I just uh, before you just quickly get on to that uh, uh, PPT. Uh, the six uh, C is uh, C's are, are actually the twenty first century essential skills, and um, uh, it uh, it uh, talks about collaboration, creativity, critical thinking, um, citizenship. Um, you know, uh, communication. Those are you know those are things. Did I miss out one thing? Creativity. Um, those are the six um, C's that I was talking about. Those are part of the twenty first century skills. Lovely. Yeah, now I guess you can move on to the next person. You know, today even our audience has been very interactive because the kind of questions that we had, uh, the kind of discussion that we have been having, uh, rightly said, I, I have earlier also mentioned this, it doesn't feel like we have spent three hours sitting here. Uh, it has been going so wonderful. Okay, so the slide is here. Priyanka, I'm over to you. All right, so the last uh, pull-up was pretty interesting because we were talking about uh, taking the power of PBL to the classrooms, the actual uh, work area where we need to execute and look at the, the success and the failure of, uh, you know, the entire idea uh, coming in, 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 the, in between the teaching learning process. So great insights from everyone. The major takeaways uh, that uh, we brought about, I think, was the first thing, the first learning major part was that PBL is a tool and not a product. So let's not look at it as something that is going to give us a result, which is like either yes or no. So it's an open-ended uh, learning uh, uh, you know, tool, and we must allow that kind of uh, interpretation of the results as well. So it's important that we understand that there, there is no right, right or wrong way of finishing a project. It, we will have to bring in those rubrics in a way that children learn through the journey of doing a project work. So that's very important as a learning when we take it to the class, because it is important for the teacher to understand it. You are the ones, the teacher is the one who is designing it. It's important that I'm not designing it for myself, I'm designing it for the child. So the child has to experience the journey the child has to be happy through this journey. So that was one thing that was very important. Now coming back to what is required to empower these teachers to understand the correct implementation of PBL. So we, we talked about having a vision and culture in place. It has to reflect in everything that we do, right from how we plan to how we teach to how we assess. And the most important part is the feedback. And the feedback, in fact, very rightly said by Dr. Pillay was that it's, it, we have to understand it has to be feedback or a feed forward. Where are we using PBL and how do we interpret, interpret PBL for learning process rather than assessment project? Where is it going to uh, help the child more? It can be used either ways, I guess. It's a very powerful assessment tool wherein we can bring in equity and we can bring in differentiation we can bring in uh, we, what we all talk about, different kind of children all across. So we can, if we try, we can bring in that kind of projects wherein every child is given an opportunity to express and perform. So huge learning there. And uh, well, it has to come from the top. So the entire school vision and culture has to be in place for that. Then of course, the training of the teacher is very important. The teachers have to understand the core of PBL. So it's important, like um, Sunanda ma'am just said, the five C's, and you just mentioned the, the six C's and the five E's. There are loads and loads of more learnings that can come through, and a teacher can be empowered to implement PDP in the right sense. Then, of course, the resources and academic freedom is core to the success of PBL. We need to give people who are involved in the planning and the execution the freedom to design it the way they feel it is right. Too much of structure, too much of assessment may just spoil the, the entire fabric of the tool. Last of all, we learned that, and I love this line, every experience is a teachable moment. So let's not stop at anything. Let's not get discouraged at any place. We're here to learn more from whatever we do. So if we're not, if we're not able to do a certain thing in a certain moment right now, we can always go back, learn, and get better. So that was how we ended it. And a lovely session it was, and great insights coming from all the leaders of the schools. Thank you. Thank you, Priyanka, ma'am. Uh, that was actually wonderful. Uh, there's this one thing that I have always experienced, not just uh, 
my views, but this this comes from actual experience. Uh, this was one of the questions also in uh, one of the panel discussions today. What about stakeholders? What about parents? Now, what I have experienced is that uh, teachers, yes, our teachers, not all the teachers in India, at least, uh, if, if I can uh, talk about, uh, not all the teachers in India are trained to execute PBL style of uh, you know teaching learning methodology. But even that is easy. I mean, if we make a little effort, if all the schools come together, we can very well train our teachers and teachers are ready to learn. They would love to grow themselves. What do you do with parents? I'll share one example. I was doing teacher training in one of the cities in Punjab. And, uh, and the one condition that I always have in my trainings is that all the teachers, teachers from all the subjects should be in that hall. So while I was doing and uh, while I was explaining one project that how you have to implement this, I spoke to the physics teacher that this is the part that you will be executing in this project. And this is where the math teacher comes in. I said, okay, now I need the arts teacher because there is one part that he has to execute or she has to execute. The school said, we do not have an arts teacher. I said, how's that possible? So the principal stood up and he said, uh, Mr. Vikramji, there is this one thing that has happened. Our arts teacher was one of the best artists that we have in the city of Jalandhar. Uh, we hired him, we brought him to this place and we, uh, you know, our, our students were really happy until one day he caught hold of a parent and he said that uh, your son always loses his drawing book and his colors. Last week I purchased him a new drawing book and a pack of colors from my own money and he has lost that also. Please talk to your son and make sure that he doesn't lose that pack. He's a wonderful artist. So the parent told this teacher, and I, I'll translate it to, for, you, for everybody later, but the, the way he said, Master Ji, isko pad likh lene do, aise faltu cheeza mat sikhao. I mean, a parent actually telling the art teacher that let him study and don't teach him all this stupid stuff. How do you deal with such kind of parents when you bring in a totally radical thought according to them, a totally radical thought that we now call uh, PBL? So I'm sure that's a big challenge and I can see we have a little bit of time left. Why, how about I quickly go to uh, all the three moderators who are now panelists and I really want an answer to this that how do you, because what I've understood is that you people are actually open to this thought uh, and not only open, but you're also implementing this whole idea of PBL. How are you handling parents? Uh, uh, Sharmila ma'am, can we start with you? Uh, see, as you said, sir, so there are some parents who uh, don't understand the importance of PBL and um, it takes time. Maybe it will take years for those parents to uh, let them understand that uh, how PBL is important and just by teaching from the book does not lead anywhere. So it will take uh, time because every school will have such type of parents. But I think majority of the parents, when we started talking, you also gave an example of the Gurukul system and how children learned better you know when they were studying sitting under the tree and there was just a board hang on the trunk of the tree so uh, so you know many of them understand and they do uh, appreciate that yes schools are doing pbls and yes it uh, helps them but there are some and we need to explain and when they see that yes the child is improved and other parents are uh, appreciating they also come on the same page Great. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, ma'am. Yeah, for us, uh, I think I've met uh, two kinds of parents. One set of parents who actually uh, think it's a great idea and, you know, it's actually support the kid, even if it, uh, you know, whatever it takes them, uh, you know, uh, maybe take them outside or do any kind of support. Okay, that's one kind of parents I do meet. And there is one kind of uh, set of people who we need to keep telling them, making them understand, you know, see now after the child is done, that's look at the improvement there. And that, and we need to keep on, uh, you know, speaking to them and convincing them sometimes. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, it does work when you uh, speak to those parents who don't actually uh, agree with uh, the kind of things we do. Uh, but they come around, maybe it takes uh, a little longer, but uh, they do come around. It's there. So that's how I think it's a matter of convincing them and to speak to them at the right time and, you know, show them the proof. At the end of the day, you show them the proof and I think uh, uh, it works out pretty well. Wonderful. Thank you. Priyanka, ma'am. Um, sir, I'd like to share a little experience here for what you said. I, we've had these problems, uh, you know, more when we were offline. 
lately, once we've gone online, I'm not experiencing as many problems as that time because probably the parents were there witnessing the teacher teach the child online. They're all sitting at the back. They want to judge, they want to see, they want to correct, they want to tell you what to teach and what not to teach. Everything is happening. But during that process, I think they've understood the kind of effort that goes into the teaching learning process that has been put in by the school and they help and that gets them to understand what we do at school in what manner. Right from the beginning, one thing that I've always maintained at school is do not shut out your parents. Do not shut out your parents. They have to be partners on board, take opportunities of bringing parents on board wherever you can, because the more they are with you, they will get convinced that whatever you're doing, you're doing for the benefit of the kid. And whatever you're doing, it is going to lead to a better child. So, and that becomes very important as a realization, we really can't do much without the support of the parents. Having said that, there'll still remain a segment who will not consider your efforts because they think in a different manner. Now to them, we then exercise the rule book that it has to happen and it has to happen. You might as well be on board because that's the vision of the school and we're going to go ahead from here. You can't see the future right now, we can. And then one thing more, I think talk, talk, talk is something that helps everybody in the long run. Talk to your children. The teacher talks to the child. The teacher talks to the parent. We talk to the child. I mean, if I'm a principal, I'm not somebody on the ivory tower and a parent cannot approach me to understand what is this program all about. Instead of letting the parent having the first thought, why can't we just, when we start, take them on board, keep them in the planning process whenever we implement something new, so that they understand the way forward. I think that helps. And it, the entire COVID time has been only a reinforcement to my belief that the more uh, you, know, you, you, you trust your stakeholders, you get that trust it back into your system. They do okay. trust you, they, they are happy with you. So I think that happens. Thank you, thank you, Priyanka. I know uh, when we talk about uh, project-based learning or uh, uh, PBL or IPBL, uh, the foundation of this entire system is creativity. Creativity is one thing. There is no way that you can exclude creativity from this entire process. And, uh, you know, creativity is so like drawing, one of the basic things which is also associated with creativity. If I ask someone to draw a nature scene from class nursery to PhD, we will make just one national drawing. Do V shape ke pakshi, ek S shape ke nadi, ek choti si jhopdi side mein. Standard drawing. Well, humne drawing kabhi ratta mara hua hai. Aur hum creativity ki baat karte hai. I think we have a long way to go. We have a long but way. I am so happy that uh, our educators are actively working towards it. Uh, I left my IT career, got into education just to tell everybody, please teach through projects. Don't give us books. We hate books. And uh, uh, I, I wouldn't second that, but yes, I would say that whatever has happened latest with the education, we only know that the walls and the books are not enough. We have a whole lot of word, world that we need to explore and let the child be free to understand where the learning has to come from. I think that's a huge realization. And we don't re we don't accept it right now. Uh, it's like it's like falling back in a in a in a run or a race, whatever we want to say, but it's going to really, really uh, then take time for us to, the generation is fast moving ahead. Oh, yes, yes, definitely. And with that, I would like to thank all the panelists, moderators, our audience who have patiently, uh, you know, attended all this session. It was really wonderful. Special thanks to Ravi for bringing such power packed uh, panels and, uh, you know, uh, enlightening us. So thank you everyone and over to you Ravi. Thank you. Thank you, Vikram Bhaji, for, uh, uh, again, I mean, the storytelling, which I really love, uh, with, you know, that came in. I saw a few comments, uh, people thanking you for making them nostalgic. So thank you very much for super moderating this. And we still have another two weeks left in this month for, again, discussing PBL. But, you know, uh, before I actually thank all my speakers, uh, I would actually throw this idea open. Uh, uh, there are uh, still 375 people as participants and uh, four of you out there. 
so uh, you know i mean if if you if you guys think that you know project based learning i mean since project based learning is 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 not not just one chapter i mean it's it's an encyclopedia but you know and I, i'm i'm pretty sure that you know uh, uh, priyanka could uh, be a master of chapter 7 and chapter 9 for instance i'm just assuming and uh, madam sunanda and uh, dr shamila could kind of you know uh, know a few um uh, you know other chapters so how about i invite you all uh, to conduct courses i mean we also have a platform called edbank so edbank is by and large the, the largest virtual teacher training uh, platform uh, in the country and it's completely free of cost i mean you don't have to pay anything i mean uh, where these amazing minds uh, you know kind of come and they teach they take uh, they, uh, they take courses for 2 hours 3 hours 4 hours and uh, uh, there are thousands of uh, men other educators who kind of uh, 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 you know i mean take these courses so i invite not just the speakers but uh, also there are uh, more than 350 participants here and uh, might as well we don't know i mean whether uh, you are uh, a master of uh, project based learning but e even if remotely you know uh, something about it i mean that you uh, you know could kind of uh, uh, feel free to share with others i mean please uh, let us know and what i can do is i mean i can also make it a part Uh, of uh, our thank you email that each one of you will receive we have your data and from there i mean i think i mean you could uh, very well uh, tell us that you know i mean this is your expertise this is this is a little sneak peek of i mean how the website looks like i mean uh, we uh, recently i think last week we finished one year of uh, our existence and also uh, commonwealth of learning the mecca of learning uh, you know the teacher training is our uh, knowledge partner so uh, you know i mean this is this is uh, a very very serious thing i mean that we wanted to share with you all that i mean there are already so many courses here i mean courses like coding in early years and uh, you know uh, there are 18 lessons in uh, hybrid teaching and learning equity and excellence in every child post covid guidelines and so on and so forth so i would uh, seriously want you all to uh, consider investing some of your time in training the other teachers and i will uh not talk much but i will uh, just share a little anecdote where i got a call from uh, madam patma p a t h m a i don't know how you pronounce in south india but, you know madam Pat padma she called me and she said uh, ravi sir it took me four days to uh, kind of uh, get your mobile number but i only called you to thank you very much because i am a teacher from a place called uh, uh, tirunel valley in uh, uh tamil nadu i i believe i'm sorry i mean this is this has been a year year ago she called me that you know i mean i uh, work for a government model school and i saw uh, one of your uh, uh, courses on some whatsapp group floating in our teachers uh, uh, group and it was a course of uh, coding for early years by dr swati popatwats and i uh, kind of went through that particular course and then she was so inspired by that kind of a content that she went to a level where she crowd funded 1100 rupees to hire a projector and invited seven of other teachers from other schools in the vicinity and they all took that particular course and they said we would have loved to have the certification uh, but then we couldn't afford of course there are there is a small cost 500 rupees for a certification which keeps the uh, technology platform alive where we have to pay for aws service and all and then we decided that we'll not only give the certification free to them but also the books on uh, you know early childhood education uh, you know uh, association that test came out uh, come out for uh, the coding in early years so this is the impact that you know I, mean, uh, i i never heard about that city name uh, but i knew that you know this impact is going over there and uh, i completely uh, you know uh, believe in uh, collaboration and uh, i invite you all not just the speakers but all the uh, you know i mean audience as well if you have anything to share with other fellow educators please come and conduct the courses we'll give massive promotions and of course uh, uh, you know uh, uh, thank you letter as well from my side i mean uh, for doing this this is a completely free platform please do consider uh, you know uh, doing some courses on edbank we'll have a link a google form link uh, uh, sent out to you in the thank you email and with that uh, you know uh, i need to go i need my coffee it's a weekend it's a friday it's priyanka's birthday i don't know whether she'll be treating us and uh, you know or uh, not she will be treating us So you're the I, one who invited me over onto the platform you should be treating us i would i mean you you actually accepted a, a panel discussion for uh, you know uh, which is falling on your birthday yeah so, that's that's how i love this that's how i love school news and that's how i can't say no to you thank you, you know thank that. You, and thank you madam sunanda thank you sharmila ma'am and uh, thank you to all our other speakers i mean uh, padma ma'am and pillai sir and you know i could kind of see uh, rohit dua i mean a lot of chats i mean and people are actually reaching out to me on whatsapp 
uh, can you share the WhatsApp numbers? I will reach out to you individually and seek your permission before I do that. Thank you once again, and thank you so very much, Vikramjit Singh Ruprai, for uh, agreeing to become the super moderator. And uh, see you all next Friday. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, my email ID is again info at the rate schoolnews.com if you have any uh, feedback or suggestions, or if you would want to become a speaker. Uh, if you have anything to share, I mean, please do write to us and we'll be very happy to have you here, uh, you know, sharing your expertise with them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ravi. Have a great Thank weekend. You. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy your weekend. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. The recordings will be there on uh, School News YouTube channel. Please go over there and uh, you could also share the link with your uh, peers. Yeah, we'll Thank do you. That. We'll do that. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, God.